the tip. And Meyer launches and buries one to start it. And the Bears on top. Welcome to Sikkim 365 Radio. First down pass attempt. Felt the pressure and went down. It was Bernard who affected him. Sikkim 365 Radio is presented by IdealMRI.com. High quality MRIs for $497 or less. IdealMRI.com. Your health is important, so is your budget. Blackler for three. Yes. Smooth. The 3 o'clock hour is sponsored by Waco Custom Marketplace. Meats, sweets, Texas treats, and a cut above the rest. 425 Lake Air Drive, Waco. Empty backfield, four-man rush. And that is intercepted. It's the Marcus Lawrence down the sideline. He goes. And look at that. Into the end zone. Now, here's David Smoke, Paul Catalina, and Craig Smoke. March Madness in full throttle. Buzzer beater last night for a team to get into the tournament. And we're in conference championship week. And, of course, sometimes that's just as dramatic as what happens when the tournament begins. Uh, a note from John Higgins of Big 12. He's actually an NCAA official. and officiates a lot of games. He's one that Baylor fans will never forget, no matter if he's ranked as one of the top officials in the game nfl banger news my goodness some banger news especially at the quarterback position and one of the great anniversaries in all of sports and one of the most grueling fights ever on this date a long long time ago we'll kind of take you back to that as well david smoke with paul catalina to my left and craig smoke to my right emory winter armstrong sims jack mckenzie who's a happy guy today all in studio so here is last night's game ut chattanooga and also Furman, conference championship game, and watch what happens here. Smith kicks it out. Oh, there is it. It's a play. Let's go hard left. Got past Banks. Got it in. 4.3 left. They're looking to the side. They want a timeout. They're going to let him play. Gene Baptiste with one. He's it for the win. All right, that's uh, that's Chattanooga, UT, the moccasins beating Furman, 64-63. Uh, UT Chattanooga won all three meetings with Furman, including that one right there, and that gets him in the tournament. Furman's been kind of right there on the edge of the last two or three, four years, and that is just the beginning. Of course, there's been other games like that, but UT Chattanooga, there are some conference championship games tonight with conferences that most likely only one team gets in. Uh, there is one, uh, Gonzaga plays St. Mary's tonight for that championship, but it isn't, God, I love it. I love that emotion. I love this time of the year. I have two thoughts from watching that clip. One is, I've never seen a shot like fall perfectly oh. into the rim from that far away before and, and just splash down. And uh, apparently Chattanooga does not have a no shirt, no shoes policy when it comes to entering the arena. I didn't. I didn't even notice that. I, I was watching either. the game myself. Oh, well, just well, okay. Right. look here. Okay, fast forward to the end. Let's see here. Hold on. All right, there's Hold on. the dog. File. Shirtless fat oh. guy. Shirtless fat guy. <laughs> Shirtless skinny guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. Hey, they're having fun, college yeah. kids. You just hope that somebody in the bottom doesn't have a rotator cuff injury or a broken leg after all of that. Craig, it's the emotions. And again, it's just conference championship week. But as much it ties right into March Madness, it all starts with this because some teams, if they don't win, they don't get in. And some teams, in fact, may not win but still be a part of the NCAA tournament. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, uh, you know, covering Baylor and talking about them a majority of the time that uh, we haven't had to even think about. You know, there, there have been years where you did have to think about, are they going to make the tournament or not? There's been years where they've gone into the conference tournament and you wondered if it was going to be a situation where they'd win enough games to ensure themselves a spot, and typically they would. But, uh, yeah, it's kind of nice to enter a tournament and you don't have to worry one iota about, you know, uh, making it or not. Uh, instead, your focus is on, can we be the number one seed? I mean, that's a, it's a pretty nice luxury is when you enter the conference tournament. And, of course, you want to win it as well. I don't think they – Bar by any means going into this tournament not wanting to bring home a championship but uh, either way they're pretty 
set up or set up pretty well either way. So yeah, I'm very interested to see this Big 12 tournament. Uh, you know, there's so many good teams and so many different storylines and, and so many different angles to approach it from, and you know, so many that that need a win to improve their seating or to ensure that you know they're going to be in a good spot. And uh, I, I think it's going to be a lot of fun in Kansas City here in a couple of days. I'm looking forward to it. And that will start here. Uh, there's a play-in game in the Big 12 and men. Uh, and, and then, of course, then here we go. And uh, tonight, there are conference championship games in the what used to be called the Atlantic Sun, the A-Sun, also the CAA, Colonial Athletic, uh, the Horizon, the Northeast Conference Championship, the Summit. Remember, South Dakota State got into it with Oral Roberts and Paul Mills' team. They're playing North Dakota State for that title. And also the uh, uh, WCC, the Western uh, Conference with the St. Mary's, who had just beaten Gonzaga about a week or two ago. They play uh, Gonzaga again tonight for that one. Then all the other ones are still early on, and some have just started. Some of them started today. Yesterday, the uh, the coaches, uh, Big 12 unveiled the coaches Big 12 team, and there was a lot of discussion about Coach of the Year. Scott Drew, Abaji was the Player of the Year. Abaji is the Player of the Year in the Associated Press. Mark Adams from Tech is the Coach of the Year, and Isaiah Brockington of Iowa State, Freshman of the Year, Akinjo first team, Flagler second team, and, of course, Texas Tech fans think that writers and media are smarter than coaches. Oh, well, you just ruined my whole, I can't believe they voted Mark Adams. Like, is that, is that how we're supposed to react? Do I not yeah, go on no, Twitter I, I and just think, I cry think, and moan about the Coach of the Year award? I mean, look, he's deserving. Uh, there's your response. Same response that you should have had if Scott Drew won it or if Bill Self won it or if you even want to throw it out to – to uh, old Iowa State and, 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 you know, go that direction. I, that, I understand that to a certain extent. Cool. Congrats to Mark Adams. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I can't like, argue against that. How hard it. was that? Yeah. I can't argue against that. I, and I wouldn't have argued Jeez. against it either. But it's just we're, we're, so, we're so overly sensitive in so many ways. And it almost like that means more. And I get it. Mark Adams is someone who Tech fans have embraced and already had. And then when Chris Beard leaves, he stays. He could have left. And I understand how much they love him. And good luck and, and to Mark Adams as they move forward as, as they open up with Iowa State in the Big 12 tournament. Now, this is an interesting note to me, and maybe only me. Uh, John Higgins, do you have that, Armstrong? This is from NCAA official John Higgins, who Baylor fans hate. Uh, he's one of the uh, highest-rated NCAA officials in the country, but he made the call in the, uh, court, uh, the Elite Eight game against Duke. Am I right, Paul? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the charging call. And uh, from that point on, no matter what he did, how many games he officiates, and there are some scatter, of course, there's just going to be somebody that when we get now our heels in the ground, it doesn't matter. I've watched him. Yeah, he's got a little bit of that look at me stuff. I get it. I think he's a good official, but again, I, I, I could be wrong. Here's a quote, though. He was on the station in Omaha about the Big 12. This is the reason I'm putting this up is not because of John Higgins. It could be a guy named Fred Smith. It's because of this quote. The hardest conference in the country to referee referring to the Big 12. The intensity is unlike no other league. When the ball goes up to the basket, you have like six or eight guys trying to rebound the ball. It's like a scrum. You're trying to decide what's legal, what's not. Blow your whistle. It's really different. It's funny. It's different than the West Coast. It's different than the East Coast. It's definitely different than the Southeast. It is just really, really, really intense. That is a hell of a damn compliment, in my opinion. Uh, I, I think part of it is if you look... Uh, which con conference has the, the best concentration of, of elite coaches? I think it's the Big 12. The fact that we can have a debate over who's the coach of the year uh, almost every season. There, because yeah, there's, there's no debate, Paul. Yeah. There's no debate, Paul. <laughs> it's the guy from the school that it's wears the guy that clothes. I root for every <laughs> night that he takes the court. But the fact that you have fan bases that can, can be incensed when the – uh, their coach is not the coach of the year is is a testament to it. They have the, the best concentration of it. I mean, right now, it's Self, it's Drew, it's Adams, it's Chris Beard, uh, it's Porter Moser, who is not going to make the NCAA tournament this year, barring a miracle uh, run in the Big 12 tournament, but a guy who uh, put Loyola on the on the national scene uh, there. It's it's Mike Boynton. It's guys like that. It's an intense, intense league. Uh, Jimmy Dick, Jamie Dixon, all these guys in this league, that's why you have it best. I and mean, you look Around. I'm not knocking the coaches in the other conference, but there's a bit of a spread between the the best coach and the worst coach in some of those other leagues. Yeah, I mean, I think it's great coaching. I think uh, you know, obviously, there's great talent as well. I mean, you look at, at across the board, and there's there's good, talented NBA future players uh, at you know a variety of different schools and. 
No, it's a physical style of ball. I bet, I bet it is hard to officiate. Like, how much do we give leeway and how much do we, you know, let them play versus maybe in some other places? But, uh, yeah, the intense, uh, you know, the, the word intense, that definitely is – is a word that, that goes well with Big 12 basketball. It is intense, uh, and uh, it has been a crazy league to follow here over the last two to three years in particular. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, I, I take that as a compliment. Uh, I think it's it's also probably a negative coming out of his mouth, too, because, you know, there is a, the downside to it. But, uh, yeah, that, that's a compliment of just how intense the, the Big 12 hoop scene is. On the YouTube chat room, we appreciate those of you who have jumped, jumped in already. Paula, Mike. Jerry, who walked up and said hi to me after the game on Sunday, biscuits and gravy. Uh, Jace as well. I, I think it's a compliment without question, but one of the problems it creates is, is how much do you let them play in the Big 12, and then how does it change based on who you get in the tournament? Not the Big 12 tournament in Kansas City, but what happens when you start in the field of 68 uh, with the NCAA, and has that at times hurt? For example, a Kansas or a Baylor or a Texas or a Texas Tech, the four highest rated teams this year uh, in the Big 12 or anybody because of what and how the style is in the Big 12 compared to how it might be. You would hope that an official that's from New York or from California or from, uh, you know, who Dallas, it's all the same, but it's not. Different styles, different regions, different play as well. Uh, now, Nikki Collins, a part of the Naismith Coach of the Year semifinalist list, South Carolina's Don Staley, Kim Mulkey at LSU, among a couple of others as well. You have the same. Uh, Oklahoma has their coach as well involved. But it, most of the ones you would expect, but that's pretty cool. She's a part of that list her first year, leading Baylor to the regular season title. Now, question here, and I, I go right, I'll read, read uh, Chase, uh, Jace's uh, chat, but the number is 254. 339-1122. We will have lines open. We're going to hear from Tyquan Thornton today, Jalen Petrie today, Mac Rhodes today, and much more with Craig's Off the Radar and Paul's Top 5. John McClain on the NFL. What a day for the NFL. Want to jump into it a little bit. Aaron Rodgers, four years, 200. He says no, but he's coming back to the Packers. He said what? He tweeted out that he is definitely coming back to the Packers, but he has not, re he has not signed an extension yet. I, 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 oh, that, I'm not – okay, I was going to say he's been offered, or is he – okay, so this is a report that's not true. Yes. Four years, $200 million. How much do you want to bet that's pretty damn close? I bet you it is. But he says – he was just like, the numbers are wrong. I have not signed a contract extension, but I am coming back to the Packers. All right, well, that's the – that's the, the lead is he's coming back to the Packers, and he's going to get extra money, and they're going to franchise tag Devontae Adams, and everyone's going to be happy, happy. And the Packers, you got to get them credit. From where they were with him a year ago to where they are now and a disappointing ending to the season, how that ended at Lambeau Field – that's pretty impressive and, they've been able to retain the MVP of the National Football and, League. And all it took was a year of intense relationship repair and therapy between the GM and the quarterback and the quarterback to go on some kind of weird uh, cleanse where you vomit and poo for a week. So, Yeah, he said, uh, hey, everyone, I just wanted to clear some things up. Yes, I will be playing with the Packers next year. However, reports about me signing a contract are inaccurate, as are the supposed terms of the contract I signed. I'm very excited to be back. Yeah, I mean, it's a big deal. I mean, I know there was a lot of scuttlebutt and speculation on where he could end up, Denver being one of those spots. And clearly, even despite today's report, if the Packers had said nothing, then um, you know, we'd still be able to shut down the Denver thing. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's good for Green Bay. I mean, I know guys like Jack are, are happy that, you know, one of the best quarterbacks in the world is going to be playing for their team once again. You know, I just hope that this means – I hope when the contract – details do come out that it's it's not so wildly different from the four years 200 million that we're playing this little game you know to the side for another entire season like we did you know the last couple years that's what I have just me personally as a fan I have no interest in all the other side stuff that he's got going on uh, I think he's an, an interesting guy to listen to and and very entertaining at times as well, uh, but I've about had my fill, and I think probably most people have of the the drama with the organization and just you know is he is he you know that whole thing like either you are or you aren't. So hopefully this means that he is, and we can stop talking about whether he won't be you know sooner rather than later. And this is a good deal for the Packers. I mean, just you know, not I don't know financially, but. Um, in terms of what else are you going to do that's going to be any better? I mean, you really want to be one of these teams that goes and rolls the dice in the draft? We've seen how 
hit or miss that can be. And, you know, he's proven. So uh, they're they're well equipped with, with him back at the helm. And I'll be curious to see what the final details are. But, yeah, hopefully this smooths over all the, you know, the extracurricular stuff. Right now, and, and my top five is about Aaron Rodgers today, but they might be able to fleece somebody for Jordan Love. No, yeah. especially given yeah. especially given the other quarterback news that we're about to talk well, about. Well, so that's a big deal, and that was something that I I didn't think he would leave seventeen years, but I I thought there were probably times when I thought there's no way this is it for him. Yeah, but, I didn't think it was it for him. I thought maybe there could be like a Denver deal or something, there, but I yeah. never. But if you would have asked me like, "Hey, put up your next paycheck on where he's playing next year," I would have said Green Bay. I would have put yeah. my money on the Packers, no question about it. Now, speaking of Denver. They were thought because of who their head coach is now that maybe they could get Aaron Rodgers, and that was something at least was good storyline. The, the Broncos have traded Drew Locke and another player, two number ones and two number twos, to Seattle, and they get Russell Wilson and a fourth-round pick. Like, I, I would just stick a fourth-round pick. Just like, okay, we want, uh, we want Sirloin or Filet, a fourth-round pick. So Russell Wilson's career with a Super Bowl win, of course, and a loss uh, with Seattle and a great run that they had is now a member of the Denver Broncos. Is that too steep? Two ones, two twos. Uh, your quarterback, Locke's not going to play. And whoever the other ones are, I'm not so sure. That's a lot. That's a huge commitment. <laughs> Yeah, is, is he, that too much for Russell Wilson right now? No, because the Broncos are built and ready to go. By the way, what time did you tell Tyquan Thornton? At four o'clock. Okay, he's texting me now, and I'm wondering. Well, look, we can, we can get him yeah, on. The I, next I, I just asked him. We'll okay. find out. But uh, I, uh, I think the for the Broncos who are built now. When you look at Javante Williams, a running back. Now they had to send Noah Fant, so that's a that's a weapon that that he won't have. But he's a tight end, a little a little bit easier to replace. But the offensive line is better than the one he was playing uh, with in Seattle, uh, in Denver by a long shot. Plus receivers in Cortland Sutton, Jerry Judy, and Tim Patrick that are all really good. A defense that's really good that might get. Von Miller back uh, now. Uh, we'll see after his, you know, got a Super Bowl ring in in, in Los Angeles. He might come in and run it back to try to get a third. That AFC West is going to be nuts when you've got Mahomes, Russell Wilson, Justin Herbert, and Derek Carr, and Derek Carr in the yeah. same division. It's going to be it's going to be a great division. The AFC West. All right, Cowboys also made some moves. They got some cap space rework. Dak and Zach Martin. Uh, and still working on a few other things. Franchise tagged on Dalton Schultz, uh, apparently happening as well. Let's take a break. And why? Huh? And why? Yeah, I, I, I think that's a lot of money for him. $10 million for a tight end. He was a very good possession receiver for him. But That's a lot of money for a guy like that. We, we, yeah. Let's get Tyquan Thornton. He's ready to go. Uh, he hasn't responded uh, to that yet. So let's take a break and let me figure it out. Let's take a break. We'll figure it out. Either Tyquan Thornton, we come back with more chat, text, and your calls. As this is Sikkim 365 Radio and 365 Sports. Don Schumador and Coffee Beans in the Town West Shopping Center off Valley Mills in Waco. Carol, Ashley, and Cheyenne run it. And what they have, uh, one, they have fresh coffee beans, an enormous amount of uh, flavors. And what you want, fresh, and or they can ground the coffee beans in front of you for you. And then also on top of that, CBD products. Man, how much has that exploded recently? CBD products, including Vita Dreams. If you take a gummy or you find out what works for you, gummy and then it helps you fall asleep more restfully and peacefully and also perhaps save you time from tossing and turning and how much would you love when that alarm goes off whatever time it might be for armstrong maybe 10 a.m or for you maybe it's 5 a.m if you'd like God, i'd like to have 30 more minutes of sleep well that will help you with that and of course the 48 foot walking humidor with all the elite brands of cigars from Padron to Cohiba to Macanudo to Ashton, Rocky Patel, and Artur Fuente, and more. In the Town West Shopping Center, Don Schumador and Coffee Beans in Waco. Baylor University is where lights shine bright. So, let there be light. Let there be roommates and teammates, scholarship and championships. Let there be fresh starts and new traditions, fast friendships and lasting impacts. Let there be laughter. Let there be joy. Let there be light. Baylor University, where lights shine bright. 
One size fits all. That may be all right for an adjustable belt or cheap sunglasses, but when it comes to your financial needs, no one wants a one size fits all strategy. Ben Erlinson, your Edward Jones financial advisor, knows that his most important goals are yours. That's why he takes the time to understand your needs, knowing you. That's how Edward Jones makes sense of investing. Ben Erlinson, 100 North 6th Street in Waco, 254 759 8533. Edward Jones, member SIPC. In the market for a quality metal building? Since 1943, Pioneer Steel and Pipe has helped Central Texas residential and commercial customers with metal building design, panel options, building components, and trim options. Pioneer Steel and Pipe's residential line is energy efficient, offers low maintenance, reduces insurance payments, is impact resistant, and carries up to a 45-year limited warranty. In addition, they can also help you find a metal building contractor for your project. Pioneer Steel and Pipe with locations in Waco and Bryan and at PioneersBoys.com. It was broad daylight. I stepped into a gas station for five minutes to grab a snack, and just like that, my car was broken into. They made out like a bandit. My laptop, my phone, everything. I called my agent to see what could be done, and he restored my faith in humanity. My claim was processed so quickly, and I was able to recover my losses. Stop by and see our agents at one of our three McLennan County locations. Coverage and discounts are subject to qualifications and policy terms and may vary by situation. Did you know that Waco Regional Tennis and Fitness is a partner of the city of Waco? Did you know that we are open to the public? Waco Regional Tennis and Fitness offers day passes to the public for only $10 a day, and we offer money-saving memberships. Waco Regional Tennis and Fitness offers over 40 group exercise classes each week, including bar, yoga, boot camp, indoor cycling, and more. There are free weights, weight machines, TRX, rowing machines, stationary bikes, new treadmills, elliptical machines, and much more on the spacious weight room floor. Personal training available where you can be encouraged to grow. Sauna, World tanning bed and kids club 17 tennis courts eight pickleball courts youth and adult tennis and pickleball lessons waco's premier experience where you can help your mind body and soul visit our website at wacotennis.com call us at 254-753-7675 or visit us next to hawaiian falls on lakeshore drive in waco Payments will qualify buyers 2.9% with 5,000 down cash or trade. TTN Electra, see dealer for details. The New Year New Ride sales event continues at Richard Carr. Find pre-owned deals like a 2015 GMC Acadia or a 2016 Honda Accord for $227 a month. Or get a 2019 Ram Tradesman truck for $333 a month. Our vehicles go through a 172-point inspection. Get top dollar for your trade and 100% approval is always the goal. Find your next car or truck today at Richard Carr. At Richard Carr, we give you more. This is Sikkim 365 Radio. Text us at 254-339-1122. The Sikkim 365 Radio text line is sponsored by Riverbend Liquor and Wine with the most extensive variety of craft beer in Waco. A hidden gem on Lakeshore Drive and 19th Street. Mike Watt Thornton will be at 4. That's the original time. He'll join us today at 4 o'clock. And, and now, if you want, 254-339-1122. 254-339-1122. That is the number. That's the text line as well. And some of you have already texted today. And the chat room continues. And, and a lot of it on the NFL and the trade of Russell Wilson, the Denver, the quarterbacks in that league, as Paul, you mentioned, along with how the officiating in the Big 12 and how the play is allowed in the Big 12 and how it could affect teams once they get to the tournament. 254-339-1122. I mentioned this at the end. Cowboys renegotiated Dak Prescott, Zach Martin. That's not a surprise. They put the franchise tag on Dalton Schultz, who really became almost Dak's security blanket. Not Jay Novacek-like for Aikman, but he was very productive. Is that too much for a tight end who cannot block? Um, probably yes, but... Considering the position the Cowboys are going to be in without Blake Jarwin, probably to start the year, and maybe not at all now because they may have to release him uh, to get any kind of other salary cap relief uh, going on. And with probably releasing Amari Cooper, unless that changes uh, somehow here in the next few days, uh, what are their targets for him? With, with you know going forward, it's it's going to be you know. It's going to be Schultz and it's going to be CeeDee Lamb and maybe Michael Gallup. They re-signed Noah Brown to a one-year deal today, but he's the 
fourth or fifth wide receiver at best. He's a special teamer. He's a nice player to have, you know, because he does some utility work for you, but he's not going to, you know, kind of change things offensively for you. Denver's also saying, Craig, that this has nothing to do with Aaron Rodgers and the uh, Packers agreement, that this became, and this was a report on ESPN, that this became something that they had been working on even prior to anything Aaron Rodgers today. Okay. I mean that, that's great. Um, I mean whatever they got the they got a deal done for yep. a, a great quarterback. I mean I wasn't too worried about whether that report was true or not. I mean it was just you know talk that was out there. Um, as far as Dalton Schultz, um, yeah, I I don't quite understand it. I, I don't. I mean he's a, he's a good player, and I think he's probably better in some areas than he's given credit for. Because right now people are looking to pick him apart because of the franchise tax situation, but. Yeah, I don't know. I know franchise tags aren't always used on franchise-type players, and he's certainly not one of those. So that's not totally abnormal. But to me, it just tells me they don't really know what they want to do with him. Like, they don't want to sign him to a long-term deal. And I guess they just want to wait it out another year and see what it looks like next season because they've got a lot of other moving parts. Besides that, I mean... Yeah, I don't, I don't really – I mean, that's that's all I can think of is that they must just be on the, on the fence a little as far as, you know, do we commit fully to this guy for, you know, a lengthy deal or do we just hang around and, and just kind of play it out? And I, I guess they're going to let it play out. But I was a little surprised by that. I was. I didn't expect him to necessarily be in Dallas next year, and I thought if they use a tag, he would certainly be on, you know, someone else that's coming up uh, with the different players that they have right now uh, on their, you know, to-do list. Yeah, that was kind of surprising. It was. Well, I, I think also it's the number. The tight ends are, what, $10, $11 million yeah, it's a year? Yeah, $11 million. Dollars, so yeah. if you franchise tag Randy Gregory, you're, right. you're in for probably nearly 20. Uh, but because, you don't have to use it either. But so, you don't have to use yeah. it either. I, the, the Cowboys almost seemingly, when they do have the opportunity to use the franchise tag, it, it feels to them like, well, we got to use it. We've almost, got one. Yeah. Like, you don't have to. I mean, I think, I think the Patriots for years just used it on Adam Vinatieri when it popped up. Like, all right, well, here you go, Adam and Terry. That way we can kick him or keep him and don't have to worry about the kicker. But, yeah, they, you don't have to use it. I, I don't know what they're – I think the overall thinking is, well, well, if we let him walk, and now that Blake Jarwin has this bizarre hip injury that's not normal to football players, what do you do about tight end? Because then you've got to get into the market. Might as well keep the devil you know because then you can kind of control the price because if he walks, you have Blake Jarwin and you're down to uh, – McEwen and, and well, I guess Jeremy Sprinkles a, a free agent too. Not that you want to keep him. Yeah, you're talking about guys like Noah, but they're yeah. not going to they're not exactly. going to help him out. So yeah, so That's you're, you're who they are. You're moving down the roster to the point of like, well, what are we going to do if you're the Cowboys? So I think Dalton Schultz is probably the lesser of many evils, and and he it was good for them. So is it worth him being franchise tag if you're not going to pay Amari Cooper? I know he's a tight end. He's not a wide receiver. I know he's also a receiver that catches a lot of balls from Dak. But would you rather have Amari Cooper or Dalton Schultz? Oh, Amari Cooper. Yeah, but that's not a it's not a fair question because they're worth different amounts of money. So you know, if you want to, yeah, straight up, Amari Cooper or Dalton Schultz. Well, yeah, give me Amari Cooper. But Amari Cooper at double the price of Dalton Schultz when I've got CD Lamb and I got Michael Gallup. That's a different Michael question. Gallup coming off a pretty bad injury. Who sure, should be but, okay? But sure, but I'm just saying, like, there's there's a difference in that question. It's not just a this guy for that guy. So when you factor in the money and who else is there. Okay, yeah, you know, it, it's it's not an exact comparison. I, I uh, Green Bay was in a salary cap hell. They've had problems. They just gave Aaron Rodgers whatever it was, and they'll eventually, of course, there'll be ways they save money on that right now. But they're about to franchise tag Devontae Adams. That's not just pocket change. They're going to find a way. They're not going to let their best receiver walk out the door. Of course, they had to do that as well if they didn't want their best player to walk out the door in Aaron Rodgers as well. I, I saw a lot of Cowboys fans wringing their hand, or you know, a lot of hand wringing over the franchise tag. I feel like that's pretty much just fans online with everything. Like everything's a big deal or is made to be a big deal, even if it's not. And so I don't think the franchise is franchise tag is that big of a deal like this doesn't derail their season by any means so you know if you don't know exactly what you want to do with Dalton Schultz moving forward whether or not you're you were prepared to to ink him to a long-term deal or if you're on the fence about that like I said a second ago then it makes sense you know you drag it out a year and revisit it next season and uh, you know, it, it's a little surprising it wasn't used on maybe some of the other guys that they have, but uh, there, there's a method to the madness. They're not just slapping that thing on somebody just for the sake of doing it because, you know, there's only, what, probably seven or eight teams that even used it today. 
I mean, maybe not even a third of the league, I think, probably even used their franchise tag. How so. much would he have made, made on the open market? Dalton Schultz? Yeah. Um, I mean, probably he was going to get a team like the Jets with a bunch of cap room and a need would have overpaid for him. So he was probably going to get $12, $13 million a year. You know, why a year. Not, why not? I mean, I, I just feel like this is kind of going back to their old school, which is fine. But. Well, yeah, they, you know, if they didn't do that, you know. Like then there'd be a complaint if they didn't. You know, like I mean, it's almost well, like a can't win with what they I, did. They, they just bid against themselves. I, I, no, no, they absolutely did not bid okay. against themselves because he would have had. Uh, what they did was they took the cheapest option, probably to sign a tight end. Uh, uh, because if they let him go, they probably need to get somebody who's at least comparable. Well, if the comp is him and and David and Joku, who's. Uh, the other franchise tight end who are going to get $11 million a year, then you have to go out of the market and, and sign somebody for that that's not necessarily your guy. And, you know, it's the devil, you know. How many years left on Russell Wilson's contract? That's um, from uh, Scotty B. just asked that question. At least two, because he just signed that extension a couple years ago. Okay. So, uh, Scotty B., you asked that question. From Mike Bean, loaded AFC West, Mahomes, ridiculous. But uh, what did Brady have to deal with in the NFC East? Mark Sanchez? <laughs> Yeah. I, I don't know sometimes. I Yeah, it, yeah I, he didn't always have. But then again, a lot of those teams had better wide receivers than Brady had, uh, even though they had quarterbacks that were not really all that franchise type, I guess you could say. Yeah, I mean, that's that's one of the things that – one of those things that will follow Tom Brady around. Yeah, but he, he got fat and happy on uh, three teams that were very poorly run. Well, that's not his fault. I am never, yeah. ever going to be, nor I have ever been, someone who has ever questioned his greatness no. – or his productivity, but, or how many fingers he needed to put all those rings yeah, on it. Even yeah, even people, people, you know, deflate gate and the fact that he was in the AFC East will be the two things that'll be like, yeah, but like, no, he won seven Super Bowls. Yeah, nobody's ever done that. It's so, nuts. Yeah. I mean, are we talking to a Cowboys writer today? Uh, no. no, John okay. Machota tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, I'm just curious, like in terms of the money piece with Schultz, of like what that means for everybody else, because they're they're clearly they've got a lot of irons in the fire right now, trying to decide exactly what they're going to do. There's the restructuring of Dak's contract, right, that they're uh, going through with as well. You got the franchise tag in use today. Uh, you're renegotiating Dak. So uh, they freed up some some good amount of money today. I mean, that's one thing they have been able to do. And, you know, how they go about and using it and whatnot is, is what I'm curious to see. But, I mean, how much of that, how much of, like, let's place the franchise tag on him, restructure Dak's deal, and we free up all this money. And that's the best way to free up money. That could have been as much a part of it as, as anything else outside of just – being un, you know, not wanting to fully commit a, to a four-year deal with with Dalton Schultz, and, I think the money piece certainly played a, a large role in it. And when they read, when they put together Dak's contract, if you read anything when it happened, is that they already had built that in for them to turn that around pretty quickly, like they do with a lot of these deals. Like even Aaron Rodgers, if it is four years, however many millions. There will be something to push it back if they need to, if, in fact, they are still really good next year. Well, they did with uh, Romo, and, like, yeah. every year yeah. for, like, it, 10 it, years in a row. It's like, it, Romo it, restructured his deal again. It's like, well, how is he even making money at this point? Like, if, I think if, one if, of the reasons that they didn't restructure Dak right at the beginning is they still had, like, $8 million of Romo dead money the first time that they could. If, in fact, Troy Aikman's contract had been a knee, he would have had like scars everywhere because they mm -hmm. renegotiated that. Remember when he made that that deal initially? I don't know what was it overall like fifty million or something mm -hmm. like that over how many years he was the uh, big boy, and then of course they got Dion and and all the other things that went with it. So they renegotiated Troy Aikman. I wonder if he might not be still getting kind of who's the guy a baseball player that's still getting paid? Aikman's probably well, still Bonilla. Bonilla. But Bobby Bonilla, uh, not quite the case, but uh, not quite as well. Now uh, from Scotty B on the officiating, we mentioned this earlier. The John Higgins quote: "Let's not forget Kansas getting all the calls and won't get as much in the NCAA tournament." There is that theory. Uh, for example, from Jay's Texas Tech, uh, physical, going to try to push around a lower seat and smaller team. They're going to get called all day if they're in the wrong setup with the officiating crew in that scenario. Too physical for other leagues. Baylor plays physical. Oklahoma plays physical. Texas plays physical. He's right, though, but like how yeah. much of a rope is given as no, far as that goes. I mean, we've seen plenty of games where you get a tight crew. they got to whistle 10 seconds into the game, and your big man's got three fouls in the first 20 minutes. And we, we've all seen games like that, and those are just a, abomination of games. But there's going to be a tournament game like that where, you know, tight officiating could cost somebody. And, yeah, the Big 12 teams in general are going to have to be, you know, cognizant of that because they do play a, a very physical style and, and they do let them play in the league. Uh, well, uh, almost, how did Baylor play Gonzaga? 
Well, yeah, they got they got that. Any way they, they wanted to. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. basically. I mean, they were physical, but I think that they, they jumped it by so much and it didn't, didn't matter. But a, a coach I forgot to mention in the concentration of elite coaches, Bob Huggins, who, you know, of course, the last couple of years has not been what Huggy Bear wants. But I think almost any time that you watch a Bob Huggins team lose a game early in the tournament, they shouldn't is because West Virginia plays hard. They play very physical. Yep. They're willing to take the chance, and they get one of those crews that has not only three fouls on the on the big man, but three fouls on the point guard. And you know, you're not even to the second media timeout yet, and they're sitting down. No, you know, you're right. You're right. And, and 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 Baylor, they like to play physical, even though they're down to a few players. And other teams have had their issues with injury as well. Do you know? Uh, Mike just said this. I didn't realize this. Uh, you know who's on the University of Tennessee Chattanooga Mox roster? Uh, is it De Silva? No, De Sousa, who was at Kansas. Silvio De Sousa, who was at Kansas, mm. is on that team. Mm. Huh. I didn't wonder. watch a lot of Chattanooga basketball, I'll yeah. tell you right now. So, I yeah, that's a name. surprise to me. I, I, I there's, I'm scared of snakes, but I love the mocks. I love the mocks. The, there's, uh, there's a guy that uh, every Kansas fan will roll their eyes when you say his name. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. Silvio De Sousa? Yeah, oh, yeah. They don't, I just a lot of headache for him for nothing. Yeah, no, you're right. Uh, let's see here from Glenn. Glenn with a text. How come Texas Tech fans have now become taking uh, now taking the Longhorn spot as the crybabies of the Big 12? Now, listen, I, I know they whined and bitched and moaned about yesterday's announcement with Scott Drew, and okay, they're fans. But yeah, that's a little bit needy. And then today, of course, you know, that enjoy it. Mark Adams, I have no problem with that. I would have no problem had he been named both the coach of the year by the coaches and or the Associated Press would not have bothered me, would not have meant one second of my time either way. But yeah, that's kind of when they made the run and Tech was good and they swept Baylor and they might get him again in the tournament. One of the things I did notice is because their fan base is so passionate and a lot of you at least have been, I'm not sure about now, watched what we do. And a lot of you came on board because we've given Texas Tech coverage. They've earned it. Football coverage, not with just Joey McGuire, but also other things. But there seemed to be this such passion about the fans and traveling, which is great. Most band, fan bases wish that was them traveling like that, or most programs wish they could get that kind of travel, that it was that became the story. And then mm -hmm. now they've kind of – and I love what they do. I think Texas Tech is dangerous. they got to figure some things out from what's happened the last couple of weeks, and they might. They probably will. But I think that became more of the passion of how they travel rather than how they were playing basketball the last couple of weeks of the season. I hadn't thought about that. But that's a very fair point because that's what all the talk was about. It was about the crowd, the crowd, the crowd, the fans, Chris Beard, the fans, the Texas. You know, like it was – there was so much talk about that. And then they turn around and drop a, you know, just a random game that takes them out of Big 12 title contention. But the crowd, the crowd, you know, and it's yeah. like – and but then it's on to the award. And so, yeah, maybe a little – uh Maybe a, a little bit of the, the eye off the ball uh, for, for some of their fans. I don't know. I definitely don't want to, you know, paint the majority because of just a couple people on Twitter. No, absolutely. Um, you know, the, every fan base has got – they're just D-head fans that just are I, – I, you know, they are what they are. They're either an act on Twitter for some – kicks and giggles that they get out of it that I don't understand or they're just you know just crappy people which is totally possible in some cases but you know I don't I don't take that as an indictment of the entire fan base but yeah there's a little bit of being defensive you know uh, in some cases and I think it's just probably the fact that they've had nothing home to write about in football for a long time and and meanwhile you, you know now there's excitement now there is but prior to Joey McGuire's hire I mean it was just just like flatlined. I mean, there was nothing really to get all that excited about, and there hasn't been for a couple of years, really. Uh, so when you're having all that success in basketball and you have such a passionate fan base, like all, all your eggs go in that basket, and, you know, and you turn around and you go play for a title, you lose it, and the next year the team that you d definitely don't want to see go win, it goes and wins it. Yep. And then you're in this situation this year where Mark Adams is, you know, off to the races, and yet – there's that stupid team in Waco again, and, and their stupid team in Lawrence, and they're the ones winning the championship and, you know, in one case winning the Coach of the Year award. So I, I think it's just feeling a little bit disrespected, but I do think that there's all sorts of fan bases that, like, rely too much on the disrespect card to the point where it almost becomes kind of empty and, and, you know, uh, not as meaningful. Um, but, you know, they, they definitely got a chip on their shoulder. I'll say that. And, and I 
respect that chip on their shoulder and i respect most all tech fans there's a couple you know obviously like i said you come across and it's just like whatever um but they're passionate i you know i I admire that well part of the other thing is just to answer glenn's direct question is maybe because texas was so much of what they were fan base wise for so long and now because they're leaving the conference you maybe have a different view of of what's going on and they're leaving the conference when they're they're down in football tremendously so it's not like they can come on and brag about you know what they're doing in football or even close or what anything means because it's been so long and while basketball is good it's still not great uh yet so maybe you're starting to notice different fan bases behavior because the you know the the thing was always x fan base is annoying to me but at least they're not texas well now you know maybe you're just noticing it more because you don't pay as much attention to texas because of what's happened in the last seven months yeah, that, that's, that may be a pretty good point. It's, uh, it does seem like that's, you know, you don't even hear about that anymore. You, you no, hear, nobody you cares. Really, <laughs> nobody cares. Everyone has moved on, and, and I think Texas and Oklahoma now know what they have in front of them as well. It, whenever they decide to leave, 23, 4, or 5, most likely it will be, you would think, before 2025, but who knows I mean, if they can. I mean, they uh, can make a lot of people start caring again, though, depending on how their two teams roll out there next year. I mean, if Steve Sarkeesian starts winning big and Quinn Ewers was really this, like, secret key that unlocks, you know, the glory of Texas football, then, you know, maybe they do end on a high note. Uh, you know, we thought they were going to be gone right now, right? They weren't supposed to be playing in the yeah, Big 12 next year, I you know, based that- on some people's mm-hmm. reports. So, uh, you know, a lot of people had their farewell tour for them last year, and they probably will have some more again this year. And guess what? They're probably going to be back in the league again the year after. So I don't know when we should hold these farewell tours. I guess every year until 2025. And then we know, okay, they're for sure not coming back this time. But yeah, I do think there is a little bit of a shift as people start to look forward. And, you know, yeah, Texas is not going to be your your big rival in basketball now if they were or Oklahoma in football or whatever. It's going to, you know, be... Uh, some of the other teams remaining. So, yeah, I think Baylor and Texas Tech, it's already a pretty hated rivalry and pretty heated as well. Uh, I expect that would only continue to to grow uh, even more over the next few years because there's going to be so much more of a focus with uh, no Sooners or Longhorns around. From uh, Jace Pierce. Uh, oh, by the way, Mike Bean, Kansas fan. Um, finesse style from Kansas will be an advantage for them away from Big 12 competition. That's the opposite of what most people have thought because of what they feel like is they've been coddled with the officiating and that's an opinion and you know you look at the free throws and all that it's all yeah everyone has their own opinion on that from jace wasn't DeSouza the dude for ku who wanted to throw a chair during the sunflower showdown brawl yes that's him from daniel tech fans have always been crybabies but god they are passionate they are passionate and they can be but fine uh from mike throwing a chair at a wildcat that's acceptable right Mike's a big KU fan. Mike. <laughs> yes, he is the he is the chairman. And, he uh, is the chairman, yeah. Jace Pierce, dude, I was listening to Heartland, and they act as if Texas Tech brings a lot of fans year in and year out during the Big 12 tournament in Kansas City. I don't think so. That's a bad assumption, isn't it? Um, I, they might – there might be – I've a, only a, been to KC Kansas, once. Kansas and State and Iowa State are the three bases, the fan bases that usually flood that place. I'll take myself out of the equation because I've only been to the KC tournament one time, and it was when COVID hit. So I was there for, for 12 27 hours. hours or so, give or take. Uh, and that was my entire Kansas. The only time I've ever been to Kansas City. I was there for barely over a day. Uh, so, yeah, I can't comment really on their turnouts. You guys could do that better yeah. than I could. It's I, always been okay. Kansas, uh, Iowa State, and Kansas yeah. State. I'll tell you, every other team other than that has a little pocket of the same group of people. Like, for example, Baylor, it's Hobby Howell, and then there's they, they, get into, they have a little wedge up here in the stands. Texas has about 10 to 15 old men that were the same thing all the time. I've been on their flight several times uh, when they connect in Dallas to go. They always wear the same thing everywhere they go in town, and that's kind of the, the Longhorn fan base in Kansas City. Tech hasn't tech had a, a nice contingent the year that they went to the Final Four because they knew the team was good, but a couple years before that, they kind of waned. But So they, they kind of started kicking up that Final Four A lot Final of it depends year. on how, uh, how much you think you have a chance to win that thing as well. well Kansas, I mean, Kansas State, and Iowa State fans are going to be there no matter what. The, well, there was one year where Baylor beat – well, I guess maybe that was last year, but there was one year where I think the last game of the year, Baylor beat Tech by 31, and then they would last have had to play year. them. Yeah. Uh, and then they – well, no, it was – the was, year I went beat, to Kansas City, but they beat them really bad at the end of the year, and no Tech fans were that, yeah. at that – but I got to there'll be more 
And, and you wonder if what's happened the last couple of weeks, there were some that, hey, I'm going. And, and also there is this. No matter what, Kansas, Kansas State, Iowa State fans don't have to go as far. Not that it's like an hour. Well, in some cases, it's less than that maybe. A lot of it has to do with this. And I know that sometimes Baylor fans just try, have tried to explain this. If you're a big, huge school with 50, 60, 70,000, you got a much bigger mm. – but do you go to the tournament in Kansas City or do you save that money for what might be San Diego, uh, Fort Worth, whoever else? And and I, I understand that because if you're not just made yeah. of money, you got to kind of decide. It's almost like going to the Big 12 football championship game for most. It's not a big deal. It's in your backyard. But then there's some that would want to put all that money into that. Do you then get to go to New Orleans? Well, at least that's a six- or seven-hour drive. That's not as bad. The difference is Kansas City, then you have the first and second round. Maybe it's in Fort Worth. Then you have the next round. Maybe it's in San Diego or it's in Portland or whatever. And then you go to New Orleans. So there, not everybody's made of money, and you got to kind of make those budgetary decisions along the way. All right, um, from Jace, uh, Mike's going to be at the Big 12 tournament. Cool. Have fun. Good for and huge. I look forward KU to fan. maybe going and actually we, attending one one day, not yeah. just going to the city and never seeing an yeah, actual we game. Get, yeah. We need to do that. That was the beginning. The literally the beginning of COVID. Yep. Like that was the start of COVID. I was in my hotel room, and we'll never forget it. And the my co-host at the time had a later flight, and he got in late that night, and called me like. I don't know, sometime after six or something, I guess he had arrived and was like, hey, I'm making my way over there or whatever. And I finally got up to the hotel room and he had arrived and we sat there. He got hungry and he's like, I think I'm going to go get something to eat. When he came back, um, Rudy we Go-Bear. sat there and we just watched the Rudy Gobert yeah. stuff. Yeah. And, we're, and we just looked at each other and we we're like, well, wonder what our plans are tomorrow. And by that next morning, we had started our show at like 11, I guess, or 12. And probably 20 minutes in that's when the big 12 announced like yeah. everything's done pretty much and then yep then it was booking flights after that that was my kc experience in a nutshell uh yeah. from jace pierce to wrap up a chat room i remember that day and it was on a friday morning wasn't it paul was it a friday morning i believe thursday or friday morning yeah. it was very very yeah. and it was I'll, weird man it was so weird it was weird being in the airport that later that day um because everybody like it's just it was so it was so bizarre because nobody really knew what was going on everybody was like unsure of what exactly to do say it. you know what i'm saying i'm like, not trying to compare it because i was not at an airport the day of or after like 9 11 when everything got shut down but it was eerily similar because you didn't know really what you could do where you could go could you get out and didn't know, what was coming next yeah didn't know like you know as far as like washing your hands like everybody was far more uh, you know smart about that than typical what you see at an airport bathroom and yeah, masks and all that kind of jazz. That was all brand new. That was wild. I'll never forget like basically that day one experience of the COVID era. It was it was crazy. Hopefully this tournament goes off a lot better than that, and it will. It will. From Mike, uh, in fairness, the Big Twelve tried Oklahoma City and Dallas. It was a massive failure, unless it was Arkansas. But you're right, and that was of course uh, many many years ago. From Jay, saving my money, holding out for DFW or San Antonio. No way I'm spending money on a tournament. We might not even win, even if we do again Baylor may have a number one seed locked up although it'd be nice if they won their opening game along with others who were ranked high including Kansas Texas Tech uh, for Mike this will be an intense Big 12 tournament likely better than any first or second round games in the country all right when we come back we'll wrap up this three o'clock hour four o'clock former Baylor wide receiver Tyquan Thornton Mac Rhodes today Craig's off the radar today Jalen Petrie today John McClain and Paul's top five Sikkim 365 Radio and 365 Sports. Marco's Pizza, Bob Mock, the owner, working on a fifth store. He had three, China Spring, Woodway, and in Belmead. Belmead's the one that delivers to us here at our studio at 101 Elm just off of MLK. And then, of course, I mentioned China Spring and Woodway. Well, then they went and opened one up, he did, in Robinson. I went by there the other day on the way to the dentist. It's a really great location just off Loop 340 and Highway 6. And now they're building one in Hewitt. Hewitt, which is basically connected to Woodway, but that allows them more access to get south, maybe even into Lorena. It's Marco's Pizza. Pizza lovers get it. They have the pizza bowls, medium specialty pizza, medium one-topping pizza, and cheesy bread. There's a, a coupon. For $19.99. Two large one topping pizzas and cheesy bread, two liters of whatever drink, $24.99. And of course, we love the uh, pepperoni magnifico, which is all about pepperoni, two different types smothered 
on the top of that pizza as well. They have more than pizza. They have salads. They have sandwiches. They have wings. And they have drinks. It's Marco's Pizza. Pizza lovers get it. One, two. I'm in love with a man named Rudy. I'm okay with that. He knows exactly what I want. He keeps me coming back. He cooks breakfast, lunch, and dinner for me. Does the dishes too. I'm in love with a man named Rudy. Last name Barbecue. It sure is easy to fall in love with Rudy's tasty oak smoked barbecue. Next in line. <laughs> Boots add protection. Good boots help you climb better and move forward faster. And when your son or daughter steps into the boots of a U.S. Army officer, they also learn how to lead. In these boots, they'll gain more confidence with expert training in one of more than 150 occupational specialties. In these boots, they'll stand a little taller and lead a team with diverse backgrounds and areas of expertise to successfully accomplish whatever challenge comes next. In these boots, they'll earn respect with valuable experience from day one that will give them solid footing for success into the future. Highly qualified candidates who earn a spot on our team can receive comprehensive health care coverage, college tuition assistance, and a bonus of up to $40,000. See all the things your son or daughter can achieve in our boots at GoArmy.com. U.S. Army Waco Recruiting Company, 254-598-8131 or 254-776-1543. At Ideal MRI, we feel blessed to be part of the Waco community. We're a small family business here in Central Texas. At times like this, the cost of health care has never been more important. And unfortunately, significant illnesses and injuries still occur. And that's why Ideal MRI is open and here to serve you through this difficult time. So if you need an MRI, ask your doctor about Ideal MRI. You can schedule online in minutes at IdealMRI.com or call 833-IDEAL-MRI. From the first workout to the last practice, sports is an incredible challenge. Hi, this is Dan Ingham with the First National Bank of Central Texas, and we're proud to support each athlete, every parent, and our educators. From families, small businesses, to the biggest industry, we're here to help. With remarkable products like First Free Checking, we've got banking ideas that fuel big dreams. The First National Bank of Central Texas, familiar faces making local decisions. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Hey, this is Bryce Petty, former starting quarterback and two-time Big 12 champion. And I know firsthand the importance of being in top shape both on and off the field. So listen up, men. If you're feeling beat down day in and day out and looking for that high-performance edge that separates the men from the boys, then look no further than the Petty Clinic Low T in Waco. Petty Clinic is a comprehensive men's health care clinic with an atmosphere catering to men. Board-certified Dr. Kent Petty has a special interest in offering the highest quality medical care to men of all ages. Some of the services offered include screening and treatment for low testosterone or thyroid, infertility, high blood pressure, diabetes, high cholesterol, sleep apnea, while offering comprehensive wellness exams and complete men's health lab panels. High performance men, remember, it's not just a petty thing. This is Bryce Petty, encouraging you to reach out and Google search Petty Clinic Low T or go to PettyClinicLowT.com and get your complimentary lab screening today. Welcome back to Sikkim 365 Radio. Have you subscribed to our YouTube channel? Search 365 Sports on YouTube. Welcome back to Sikkim 365 Radio. We are wrapping up this 3 o'clock hour. On this date, 1971, one of the greatest fights of all time. It was the first of three between Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier. And here's a clip at the end. Near This is about midway through, I believe, early to midway through the 15th round. All right, this is the final round of the fight, and what a fight it's been. Arthur McCanny has them touch gloves, something they've been doing all night. Oh, Muhammad Ali's going to go punching again. And Frazier gets in to nullify that step attack. Back. Step back, says the referee. Time is important here. 
You've never seen that before. I think there might have been a fight early on. Joe Frazier knocked Ali down in the 15th round, and then Ali kind of came back here. Okay, Armstrong. And then Frazier started right around here and started pummeling him again. What a 15-round decision. Frazier's eyes puffed up like he always did whenever he was in a good fight. Uh, and Ali, of course, went on to win the next two in New York at Madison Square Garden and then the Thriller in Manila, which might have been the most brutal fight we have ever seen. Of course, there have been others, Hearns, Hagler, and uh, Foreman, Lyle, but that was on this date, 1971. Where were you when that fight happened? I was uh, not alive. I was, I was negative nine years old. Craig was negative 13 years old. I was on the stairs of a house we had in Windcrest down in San Antonio, Texas, listening to the game, uh, updates on the radio. That's what you had. You didn't have pay-per-view. There was, I think, maybe closed circuit. But that was on this date, 1971. Joe Frazier, I think, in the history of everything I've ever watched as a sports fan, is my favorite athlete. Ever. And uh, we'll always... Why is that? I, I, just because he... He, he came from a, a plantation of uh, area in South Carolina, got on a bus, and went to Philadelphia, learned how to fight, won a gold medal, I think, in 1964. Would have been 64, 60. 1960, Ali and Fraser both uh, won gold medals and Foreman in 68. And he just, I think because of the fact that the way Ali treated him, and I just loved his style. You know, you either picked Ali or Frazier, right? We talked about this, Lakers, Celtics, or whoever. And I just I just love the story of Joe Frazier. I, I was kind of surprised to see that Cosell wasn't doing that fight. I don't know if he didn't do that one or if it was another. If that was maybe. I mean, it wasn't Cosell. Yeah, no, I mean. Cosell was not doing the broadcast. But I was, uh, Timothy said he was 15 years old in Omaha, Nebraska. I was in San Antonio, Texas. We lived in a house, beautiful house, and... Um, I remember my, my second oldest brother, Michael, was a huge Ali fan. I don't know what Robert was at the time. I don't think he mattered. I think he liked Frazier. But I just will always love Joe Frazier for the story, what he overcame, and obviously became a champion. And Ali, of course, the greatest fighter, I think, in the history of the sport. I love to say I got some favorite boxer, but I don't. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's one of the only sports where I don't have some favorite that I, I grew up <laughs> on. Like, I grew up in the era of Tyson – um, you know, he was exciting for a brief period of time, but those days were so but, long gone by the time I was still really paying attention. I mean, he had turned into ear biter and, yeah, you know, but I mean, how could, like you, I mean, if, especially now, if you walk around and go, Mike Tyson's my favorite fighter. Now I know his image has been rehabilitated, but it's still, you look at uh, somehow it has. somebody's going mean, to side so, eye you. Yeah. yeah. Somebody's gonna, and so the other thing is Craig, you and I grew up in the wrong era. We were at the end of. You know, like Ali and Frazier were done, you know, so the, the people who were there were like Leon Spinks was still hanging on and then Tyson came and Tyson was kind of the, the supernova that burned out boxing, really. When you look at it, Holyfield would might have been my favorite one, but, you know, I wasn't like, God, I hope he wins or I'm going to be sad. Yeah. It was just like, oh, neat. Yeah, Frazier, George Foreman was old and overweight, yeah. uh, you know, and th that was still like it was Holyfield Foreman, but they were in their 40s and. Um, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't this, it didn't spark me like it did, you know, people when they were younger, um, and, and those guys were in their primes. And then Frazier lost the title when George Foreman knocked him down six times in two rounds in the morning. I lived in Japan. I cried that morning when the teacher told us who won the fight. I was, I was stunned because Frazier seemed to be invincible and eventually Ali beat Frazier and it just kind of, it kind of just kept circling. And then Foreman beat Frazier up again a little bit later on. When we come back. He lit the NFL Combine up. Baylor had a few guys who did that, but he was the first. And Tyquan Thornton next on Sikkim 365 Radio and 365 Sports. Pioneer Steel and Pipe, your home for steel pipe metal. 1943, they opened their doors, and they are stronger now than ever before. And they have a place that they're building, a brand-new facility they're building in Waco that's bigger, better, faster, stronger, that allows them to have even more product and even better distribution, although their product and customer service has been phenomenal, and that's why they've been in business since 1943. They have a location in Bryan as well. Pioneer Steel and Pipe, the Pioneer Boys, going through all of the various changes in this country, economics, presidents, Congress, whoever else, the ups and downs of the stock market, and here they are, even COVID, and they're stronger than ever before. 
Uh, it's, a, it's an amazing story. How many businesses are still in business that started back then? And you have to be good at what you do with not just your product, but your handshake and what it means to be a customer and how they treat you. Pioneer still in pipe. Waco and Brian, pioneerboys.com. Jeep celebration is going on now at Allen Samuels. Come see the newest Grand Cherokee, the new 2022 available in a two-row or a family favorite, the three-row Model L. Jeep re-engineered for the future. The Grand Cherokee is ready for the next great adventure. Are you? Find legendary power and confidence, along with head-turning style, is what Grand Cherokee is. First responders get a $500 discount. Shop AllenSamuelsDCJ.com or come in and see our huge selection of brand new cars and trucks. Come by. Let's be friends. Don Humidor, your home with a 48-foot walk-in humidor with the elite cigar brands from around the world, including the number one cigar of the year, Aging Room, Quattro Nicaragua. Plus, they have the great brands like Macanudo and Artur Fuente, Rocky Patel, Aston, and so much more. CBD, great for sore muscles, aches and pains, sleep, Vita Dreams and anxiety, mild depression, general health and wellness. Their staff, very knowledgeable on the subject. If anyone is curious about CBD, ask Carol and Ashley, John Schumanor in the Talwood Shopping Center off Valley Mills in Waco. You know what would make this moment better? Pizza. Dough made from scratch and an Italian family sauce recipe pizza. Three fresh signature cheeses making a melty blanket of perfection pizza. Like loads of premium toppings like crispy old world pepperoni, savory Italian sausage, and fresh sliced veggies pizza. That's Marco's Pizza. Visit Marco's.com and make any moment better. And with four locations in Waco, Bellmead, China Spring, Woodway, and soon to open in Robinson. Marco's. Pizza lovers get it. Baylor Scott and White, Southwest Sports Medicine and Orthopedics. The team physicians for Baylor Athletics, diagnosing and treating all sports-related injuries, including concussions. These specialists also provide orthopedic services for athletes and non-athletes alike, whether it's knee or shoulder pain, hand or wrist injury, orthopedic spine care, and even an arthritis and total joint clinic. Trust the doctors Baylor Athletics trust. Baylor Scott and White, Southwest Sports Medicine and Orthopedics. Wants to get you back in the game. It's plain and simple. Waco Custom Marketplace is the one-stop shop for what you need for tailgating from charcoal, cold beer, and wine. And, of course, customize your order with brisket, tri-tips, sausage, wings, smoked pork tenderloin, country-style or pork spare ribs, marinated beef and chicken fajita meat, ground beef and chili, meat, hot dogs, and burgers, buns, seasoning, sauces, chips. There's fresh-baked bread and kolaches every day, breakfast sausage links, and you can also customize your favorite Favorite cut of steaks from select choice or prime, bacon wrap fillets, ribeyes, New York strips, sirloin, T-bone, and porterhouse. Full service butcher shop includes pork, poultry, beef, chicken, and seafood. Serving Waco restaurants and families since 1940. Your one-stop shop for beef, pork, poultry, and seafood needs. Waco Custom Marketplace, 425 Lake Air Drive, or WacoCustomMarketplace.com. Automatic Chef Canteen is a full-service micro-market vending and office coffee provider with state-of-the-art vending equipment, a wide variety of products, and offering custom-fitted micro-market vending office coffee solutions for your employee break room. You want a full break room solution and a workplace oasis? Well, Automatic Chef Canteen, locally owned and operated for over 50 years in Central Texas, also includes in-house mechanics on call 24-7 for fast, reliable service and maintenance. Automatic Chef Canteen, 6900 Imperial Drive in Waco or online at automaticchefcanteen.com. Welcome back to Sikkim 365 Radio. The 4 O'Clock Hour is sponsored by Boozer's Jewelers, the wedding ring store, specializing in custom jewelry and repair, all in-house. Now, here's David Smoke, Paul Catalina, and Craig Smoke. What a weekend it was in Indianapolis for a handful of Baylor football players that we watched grow up right in front of our eyes from the time they arrived on campus 
through the thick and thin and then back to the top by winning the Big 12 title and the Sugar Bowl against Ole Miss. And Tyquan Thornton was a part of all of that. And he joins us. Craig Smoke, Paul Catalina, David Smoke on Sikkim 365 Radio. Tyquan, thank you for your time. We appreciate it. I know you've been doing this almost roundabout with all sorts of shows around the country. How much has your life changed since you put up that crazy number and that number you wanted to put up in the NFL Combine? Uh, man, it changed a lot, man. Just, um, you know, putting the world on notice, um, uh, showcasing my speed and them finally noticing my speed, you know, then my phone been ringing off the hook a little bit. <laughs> Taekwon, uh, you're looking. For, you're from the 305. There's a lot of fast guys from the 305. You certainly uh, keep that Miami tradition of speed alike. When you were coming up and playing in Miami, uh, how important was it to be able to, you know, show yourself with that that speed? Because so many guys come out of that area and play college football. Yeah, yeah. Just growing up in Miami, um, a lot of guys. I mean, everybody has speed. You know, that's a skill set that we always um, tend to have. But, like, um, also having that savviness, being able to juke and um, maneuver through through traffic and everything. So that's something else that we um, tend to have um, playing uh, football in Miami. So, Taekwon, uh, when you were, you know, getting prepared for the 40, what did you expect to run? And then once you ran what you did run, I know that it took a little while for it to become official, uh, but either way, yeah. it was a tremendous number. But just, you know, what were your thoughts going in? And then what were your thoughts once you figured out what the, the number actually was? Um, I mean, my thoughts going in was to break the record. You know, um, the whole time training at SPE, you know, Matt Gates and Tony, um, them guys, Helped me out tremendously, um, getting me stronger, getting me, um, helping me get to top end speed, like it went within my first two steps. So, um, you know, I was talking for, for two lows, you know, so I thought that what I was going to run going into the combine, that what I um, had my mindset towards. You were recruited by Matt Rule and his staff. I know you mentioned him as well, and, and we covered you during that time as well. What was the selling point? What changed your mind from being at Florida, being from Florida, and ended up at Baylor? Um, man, just how family oriented everything was in that um, facility. Just walking inside there, you know, I think Baylor went, what, 1-11 the year before that? Mm -hmm. But um, walking inside that facility, I could feel a culture change, you know, meeting guys like Jalen Peachy, Terrell Bernard, you know, Graylin Arnold, those type of dudes, high-caliber players, and Tristan Ebner. You know, all them dudes, high-caliber players, but they just showed, like, love, real genuine love, and they treated me like a brother, you know, right then and there, and I just felt like, we had a connection, and I wanted to be a part of that um, change there at Baylor. Right, we asked uh, Kalen yesterday if you guys were going to run the four by one with the four guys that ran at the combine. You, Ebner, he, and JT. Uh, what the four by one would be, and he he wanted the anchor leg. He said he would put you on the on the turn. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but who, how would you run that four by one? How would you set it up? Um, so I'm gonna go with, um, see, I gotta be the second leg or fourth leg, but how I, how I, I'll take first leg, I'll set it off for the, for the group. Cause I feel like my, I'm starting on, got a whole lot of Baylor, um, better since I've been at Baylor. So I'll take first leg, put JT at second leg, put, um, Tristan at third leg and let Kaylin bring it on home. Why would you have to do the second or fourth? Is it because your length and how you run the turns or what? No, I just feel like those two legs, those are the most important legs. You know, those are the go-getters. You got to be mm -hmm. the go-getter to go second, second to um, fourth. Those are the go-getters. But um, um, JT, he, he got a good stride. So I'll, I'll replace with JT, let him go second leg. And I'll just set the tone off at first leg. All right. I think JT, I mean, people were expecting him to run a good number, but I don't know if anybody had him sub 4-4, four, four, and, and he was able to run yeah. that 4-3, that four, well, 4-3-8, four, uh -huh. I believe. And then, obviously, yeah. Tyquan, you know, you set the tone on Thursday night, and everybody was talking about Baylor football because of Tyquan Thornton. But then by the end of the event, mm -hmm. it was, you know, Kalen and, and then JT. And everybody was expecting Kalen to, to run a fast time, but just what were your thoughts as those guys got ready to, to run their 40s? Um, I just knew the Beta Boys were going to show up, man. You know, we've been working since we got the Beta since our freshman year. You know, we always had to, you know, um, earn our respect. You know, we still got to earn our respect to this day after we done ran fast and everything. I think we still have a point to prove, not to everybody else, but to ourselves. We got to prove ourselves right because that's what we've been doing since we've been at Baylor, you know, and that's what we're going to continue to do. But I knew them guys were going to 
run fast and perform at a high level because that's just what we do at Baylor. Taekwon, uh, as great as um, last year was, and man, were you, I, you know, you had a fantastic year. I thought you made some catches from different angles, low, in traffic, whatever else. Obviously, people look at the yards, the catches, the touchdowns, but I just thought under the clutch and in, in, in traffic, you were fantastic. But the year before was was not fun for you or anyone else. And how much did it take for you to kind of just mentally get through your junior year and want to come back and contribute and be what you were your senior year? Was there ever a thought you might leave Baylor? Um, I mean, um, after that season, yes, I had a little doubt in my mind. Um, I was thinking about leaving Baylor, but, um, you know, I never transferred from any high school or any, like, that wasn't, that's not me. Mm-hmm. So, um, I wasn't just run, trying to run away from the challenge. You know, adversity could cause some men to, you know, break and cause some men to break records. So, um, you know, I, I believed in Coach Runner and what he had going on. You know, we all knew we didn't have the best offseason. You know, it was Zoom calls, and we didn't know if we was going to have a game one week. So, you know, 2020, it was a, it was a lot of crazy stuff going on. But uh, we came in, you know, changed the, I changed my mindset. You know, I worked way harder, and I got a whole lot better. And I feel like the team got a whole lot better, and it showed this year. Taekwon, you, you mentioned you had a whole lot better. You were – exponentially a better route runner in 2021 Mm -hmm. did that adversity kind of force you even into looking at okay what what do i do what's what's my role in this to to make sure that i take the next steps yes it definitely does you know seeing that um you know i ain't reached the goals that i had set for myself i just can't point fingers like oh it's on him it's on him nah i gotta look at the man in the mirror and see what 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 where i gotta get better at and that was like areas like route running and making test of catches and getting stronger in the weight room and being more physical in the run game. And I feel like I checked all those boxes this year, and it's, it's still more improvement to be made, but um, I feel like I got better. So what was it like seeing Dave Aranda, meeting him, you know, in the very beginning, then Zoom calls and all that weirdness that you just talked about? Uh, what was the difference there in year two, in your opinion? Um, in year, in year two, yeah, I guess um, we, I guess we, with we, I guess with Coach Aranda and just the differences you saw in him and, and how he grew and, and the program grew along with him. Um, I feel like we just grew closer together as a um, unit. You know, um, when we first came in like over Zoom, you know, I studied this in communications. Like, if you over the phone call with someone, like, there's no way basically y'all gonna you know exchange some re- true emotions and um you know understand each other and get off get off on the right foot. So, but um the Second year, year, year two, we kind of dove a little bit deeper of just outside of football, just getting to know the person over the player, you know. And I feel like um, that's where we grew at as a team. We got closer as a team off the field. So then when we got to on the field and we got into them at first time, that just made the bond even stronger, you know. Mm-hmm. Taekwon, how much do you feel like, and I know Ron Butler, your agent, um, your lead agent, You, when you run that, people knew of you, you're a part, you're there for a reason. The NFL thinks that you're going to play in the league, and they they like you. They like mm-hmm. you, what you bring to the table. How much yeah. How much did that change what others may think of you? You still have to run the routes and catch the ball and do all the things and do all that, and you can. Mm-hmm. How much do you think yeah. that maybe bumped you up a little bit? Um, I, I probably think it bumped me up a little bit, you know, but I still have to, like how you said, I still have to go out there and run routes, which I know I can do, and catch the ball, which I know I can do as well. So, um, I feel like it bumped me up a little bit more. It made it a little bit um, more easier for me, but I still got to put my head down there and um, work, you know. Taekwon, uh, one of our uh, listeners on the chat room wanted me, us to ask you, uh, do you think that there was a game this season where that, that set the stage for what you guys did in the Big 12 championship and in the, in the Sugar Bowl? Um, yeah, um, I'll say a game, um, I'll say going to TCU, um, TCU game, getting that loss there, you know, that was kind of the eye opening game, you know, um, you know, we fought and clawed, you know, them guys came out, they came out hot and they played well, but, um, as a unit, we stuck together as a team, even though, you know, it was very adverse. It was a hostile environment. I feel like we still played together as a team, but not like not getting the win and ending that game how we ended. That that grew us closer as a team, and we knew like basically was unstoppable. Like after that, you know, that was the one time we was gonna let that happen. You know, we knew we had to fix that and correct that right then and there, so we could get to where we wanted to be. 
Yeah, it's pretty crazy if we were to all go back to that week and all the talk from that week and just the feelings and then where you guys ended up. I mean, it, it is a testament to just sticking with it and, and persevering. Uh, obviously, in the, in the Big 12 title game, that was about as dramatic of a, of a contest as you could get, especially there at the end. Mm -hmm. What were you doing on that fourth down? Where are you watching from? Are you, like, standing next to anybody in particular? And, and what was your reaction when Jeremy McVay made the McPlay, as uh, they've, they've come to call it? <laughs> oh, man, love, I love McVay for that play. But um, I, I was standing at the 50. You know, they were, what, on the one-yard line? Yeah. Dang, uh, there was a lot of thoughts going through my head, you know, because we all, we all be scratching and claws throughout that whole game. But um, I was standing at the 50 watching that play, and once we realized he didn't get to the pylon, you know, um, we all ran on the field. We stormed the field, and I, I just found Terrell. Me and Terrell jumped up, hugged each other, fell on the ground, and it was just a, a moment of joy and happiness, you know, just um, seeing how far we came as a team, you know, going from 1-11 to 7-5 and five to, you know, winning as many games as we did, you know, then going in 2020 and having that downfall year, you know, and just picking it back up and um, being one of the greatest teams in Baylor history, you know, it's, it's amazing, you know, and I, I love them, all them guys. I love the coaching staff, you know, and I, that's something that I take with me to I, to I leave, you know. I can hear you smiling just thinking yeah. about that play. Yeah. Like, do you smile? No, nah, nah, <laughs> nah, how are you smiling right now? I'm yeah. smiling right now. Tyquan, uh, what's the difference between catching a pass from two guys that you obviously – made a living in a way your last year it, with what Gary Bohannon did and then also then learning and catching passes from Blake Shapin. Yeah, um, just knowing that um, both of them guys, you know, have different styles of um, play. You know, Gary Bohannon, he, he, he has a cannon and also he um, can run the ball too as well. You know, and Blake Shapin, him, by him playing baseball, he has that side arm and he can um, make some throws that uh, could be in tight windows and have um, his balls have more like a um, – zip to it, you know, by him playing baseball. But both of them are two great quarterbacks, you know. Um, you know, I know that room is going to be very competitive. We got them guys going to work this spring. And I'm I'm excited to see them guys um, achieve, you know, and attack this next season. What does it say about you that you did stick with it and you had the ability to believe in Baylor after 1-11 and 11, and then after 2-7? Mm -hmm. and seven? I would think NFL scouts, GMs, coaches, whoever will love that commitment you gave them back. Yeah, man, uh, it's always just sticking to the plan. You know, sometimes it's going to get hard. Sometimes you're going to want to, you know, abandon the ship. But it's all about who who stick to the script and um, just continue to pound in the rock. You know, that's something that we spoke about at Baylor. You know, the rock the rock ain't going to break on the first hit. You know, so you got to continue to pound that rock, pound that hot rock because it's going to um, break sooner or later. So four years ago, you're getting recruited, I guess a little over four years now, you were getting recruited by Baylor. I can't imagine, Taekwon, that you had ever been to Waco, Texas before, like, your visit, right? No, I haven't. <laughs> no, that was my first time. So you show up in Waco, kid from Miami, and I've been to Miami, and, and I've seen parts of it, but and I know it's wildly different from what little I've seen from Waco, but just what, how, how much of a growing experience and, and how much of, of who you become now – you know, was a result of getting out of town, going a few states away, getting far from home, and, and, and you know, living here in Waco. I mean, how much did that help develop you as a man? And, and what was that experience like for you? Oh, uh, man, it helped me grow a lot. You know, just going from a big city to a small town like Waco, a college town, you know, um, it humbled me. You know, it, 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 it kept my head on straight. You know, I was able to be tunnel vision in Waco, you know, and I, I was surrounded by the right crowd, you know, right around – great people you know I met a lot of good people you know I mean not even on the football side just people are, um you know in the classroom and all that you know so um I feel like Baylor was the best pick for me you know that's something that I, I grew from and I learned a lot at Baylor you know they taught me a lot you know and um I'm very thankful that I made that decision you know Taekwon uh what's it like to know that you are about to start a career Football, playing football in college is a career, or even high school, but you're about to become a pro. I mean, basically you are. Uh, what's it like yeah. knowing that's in front of you and, and, and all the exhilaration of, of staying focused and enjoying the moment? Um, it's, it's, it's a dream come true, but, I mean, that's just a net milestone. You know, there's something that we've been, you know, thinking about since we were young kids, you know. So it was from Little League to high school to – playing college ball now is want to play in the NFL so now that I'm right here you know that's just 
the next step, and I feel like I got to attack it going full speed. Last question for you. Baylor now moves on, right? You're on to the NFL, among others. Uh, what, they got a lot. They still got some freaks left in that locker room, don't they? That they, they oh, yeah. Were, oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, um, I feel like, man, the team, they, they ain't missing out on nothing right now. You know, it's a lot of young guys ready to step up. and some older guys that's going to lead the team in the right way. You know, I know Gabriel Hannon, he's going to do his thing on that side of the ball, leading that group in the offensive line. I think the whole offensive line is coming back to as well. Mm-hmm. You know, and you got guys like Tate McWilliams, you know, Monterey Baldwin. Baldwin. Y'all got a little flashes of him, but it's guys like Seth Jones and a couple of freshmen that just came in. And um, Joshua Fleet, don't forget about Fleet now. Yeah. Um, he's going to um, have a great year. And um, that defensive side, I know that defensive side going to be good, led by Dave and Ronda. Man, Monterey's touchdown against Ole Miss. That was still that was one of the most exciting plays all year because of what yeah, it meant. It was, a, it was a great play. Uh, Taekwon, we are going to let you go here. You ran the the incredible forty uh, at the combine. You also had a top ten vertical jump. You had a like top five ish broad jump as well. Are you going to do the rest of the workouts? I guess at pro day, like c- kind of what's your plan with that later on this month? Yeah, my plan is to finish off uh, what I, where I lost at, left off at on that pro day. So I will be running around catching balls at pro day. Okay, cool. Hey, Taekwon, thank you very much. We appreciate you for being a part of the show. I know you've been doing a lot of these. That means it's, uh, there's a reason because you earned it. You've earned everything you're getting, and good luck. Ed. We'll see you March 30th. All right, thank you, guys. Thank you. Taekwon Thornton, Baylor wide receiver, had himself a day at the Combine. Jalen Peachy will join us at 5, but coming up next, Baylor – Director of Athletics, Mac Rhodes, Sikkim 365 Radio and 365 Sports YouTube. Richard Carr, Buick GMC Cadillac. They are the people that you can count on, and right now they want you to get on their inbound vehicle list so that you can get your new car or truck as soon as they arrive on the lot. You can get in touch with the dealership right now and get your name on that inbound vehicle list so as soon as that car or truck that you ordered arrives, it's yours and you can get in it and drive off the lot and you can buy a truck now. 0% financing for 72 months for qualified buyers. If you're in the market for an SUV, they've got 11 different SUV models from three different brands, GMC, Buick, and Cadillac. They also have dozens of trim options on those 11 SUV models from three different brands. Richard Carr is a one-stop shop uh, for that perfect SUV that fits your needs. They've got the fun and nimble Buick Encores, the luxury and sophistication of Cadillac Escalades, and Richard Carr will find that SUV you need starting at 24000 So call now, come by now, or go online to find the perfect SUV for your family. If you're not looking to buy new, they also have plenty of premium pre-owned cars and trucks that have all gone through a 172-point inspection before hitting the lot, and they have over 10 lenders who will do what it takes to get you in a car today. 100% credit approval is always the goal, so go online or come by for a test drive. Trust the good local people you can count on over 20 years in Central Texas. Proud Waco ones, proud Baylor Bears. Log on to richardcar.com today. Call now or go see them now off Highway 6 at the Imperial Exit. With so many companies and policies out there, it gets so confusing shopping for insurance, and I never know if I'm getting the policy that's right for me. Luckily, I met the team at the Niche Group Insurance Agency. With the Niche Group, you can go to one company and get access to coverage options from many insurance carriers, and you get to speak to a real person about your specific coverage needs. With the Niche Group, I know I'm getting the right coverage at the right price. If you need insurance, talk to the experts at the Niche Group at 1-800-258-8302. Do you or your kids get nervous about going to the dentist? Stonewood Dental, Dr. Steve Childress, he can help. I've spent a career taking care of patients who as children had bad experiences, and now they're adults that hate going to the dentist. If I get a kid at three years old, and they come every six months, and it's a happy experience, it's normal for them. Now they have an accident at six or seven or eight at school. Now they have a broken tooth or a trauma, and they have to come here They're used to lights, they're used to water in their mouth, they're used to experience, they already trust us. It's amazing what we can do with that kid without it being a negative thing. But if I see a six or seven or eight year old that's never been to the dentist, and now they have a trauma or an unfortunate unexpected toothache, it's harder to do that for that kid and it not be somewhat of a negative experience. So bottom line is I try to teach kids and adults and teenagers their body the way I'd want my family treated, which is where it's a necessary part of life. You just take care of it. It doesn't have to be that big a deal. Learn more. Stonewood-Dental.com. 
One size fits all. That may be all right for an adjustable belt or cheap sunglasses, but when it comes to your financial needs, no one wants a one size fits all strategy. Cam Heathcott, your Edward Jones financial advisor, knows that his most important goals are yours. That's why he takes the time to understand your needs, knowing you. That's how Edward Jones makes sense of investing. Cam Heathcott, covering Conroe and Houston, 936 756 7717 or cam.heathcott at edwardjones.com. Edward Jones, member SI. PC. Let Camille Johnson Realtors guide you seamlessly through the process of buying your dream home or selling your current one. Commercial, farm and ranch, or residential, Camille Johnson Realtors can smoothly and successfully lead you through any transaction. With a team of 28 experienced agents who are excited about serving you, Camille Johnson Realtors services the entire greater Waco area. If you're in the market to buy or sell, contact Camille Johnson Realtors, 104 Midway Center in Woodway, or find them online at www.camillejohnson.com. Camille Johnson Realtors, elegant, charming. Army, warm. Welcome home. Brad Boozer, Boozer's Jeweler, joins us on Sikkim 365 Radio. Boozer's Jewelers on the corner of Valley Mills and Lake Air Drive. It's a staple of the Waco economy. And you're about to approach this time of the year where you have the holidays, special gifts. It's not that you don't have that every single day. What are some of the things you have coming up? You know, we kind of call ourselves the wedding ring store. We do all of our own custom work in-house. I've got two expert jewelers on staff every day. We can make anything from scratch. We kind of pride ourselves, probably nine out of ten every Every engagement ring we do is actually made custom to what the customer wants. People look at that, oh my God, I can't afford it. I can't afford something like that. You've shown me examples that you can fit pretty much any budget. It doesn't cost any more to custom make something. You still have gold, you still have diamonds, and you still have labor. Best thing about a custom piece is if you have any old jewelry or heirloom jewelry or something passed down from a grandma or somebody, we can take that jewelry and use it towards your wedding ring for the sentimental value. And then you've got the product and then it's just a little bit of labor and a little bit of design on your part of what you actually want. You want to know why they're successful? Brad Boozer, the owner of Boozer's Jewelers on the corner of Valley Mills and Lake care in Waco. Welcome back to Sikkim 365 Radio. Our weekly segment with Baylor Director of Athletics, Mac Rhodes, is brought to you by Edward Jones Investments Brokers, Tom Albers, Brad Wilson, Ben Erlinson, and Cam Heathcott. Edward Jones, making sense of investing. On the chat room, uh, Warzone Clips. Hey, Ty, what's up? Good luck, man. Mike, uh, he would be a great chief. And then Stephen Snook, no wonder the construction outside your studio is taking so long. Every time you show the video outside your studio during the breaks, I've yet to see a construction worker moving oh, or even preach. see one. Yeah. Preach. Yeah. There's a, there's a road next to us. Uh, it's the op, it's the intersection to the right of what you're seeing on the screen. Uh, this road's been dug up uh, for going on three months now i haven't seen anybody in like two weeks yeah and they I mean, told us it would be done in there. four or five months yeah which is probably because they're all across the brazos building that new basketball pavilion that's yep. it we're now joined by banner director of athletics mac Rhodes, mr confetti that's your nickname i've uh i've been given worse so i'll take <laughs> Do you did you like find like like a piece of confetti in a, a collar of your suit or jacket or you know just anywhere when you got home? I uh, I uh, I had a, a few pieces like in in the collar, but uh, but people actually pointed them out to me as I was as I was leaving the arena. So yeah. thankful thankful for that because I actually walked into H E B after the uh, the women's championship. So okay, all right, so. Here we are, tournament time in the NCAA tournament next week. It's great to know you got two teams. Both could be number one seeds. Obviously, work to do in Kansas City. And, it, you know, it, it, have, did you ever truly believe you could have all three, football, men's, and women's basketball, holding championships in the same calendar year? Yeah, I don't, I don't know that I ever, you know, truly thought about that. Um, certainly, um, it's uh, grateful that, that it's, that has happened and um you know um i don't know just um it's it's a little bit surreal and uh you know it it makes you just think about all the all the people that uh have a have a part in it and uh we, we talked about it as as an executive team you know yesterday uh i just mentioned you know it's it is so many people it's not just 
any one person and uh, every every person plays an important role and every person has has done their role and you know uh, obviously it it starts with your with your student athletes and and certainly the the coaches but it's it's everybody I man I think about facilities I think about health and wellness academic services um, all of it um, just uh, everybody should be should be proud and and it's and it's because of everybody you know, um, pulling the rope in the same direction and, and being aligned. And, um, and it's, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know that I, I thought, I thought it would happen. And, you know, we, you know, this, when I, when I arrived, I, I talked about being a, a top, top five athletics program in the country and, and not just, not just in, in the win loss column, but, but in everything. And, you know, um, We've, uh, we've, we've come a long way and, you know, certainly great things were done before I ever arrived on, onto this campus. And, you know, look, it speaks to the institution. This is a, this is a great, great institution with, with great people. And, um, you know what, we're going to continue to fat, uh, fight, scratch, claw, um, you know, um, you know, work like we, we haven't won any of them. And, uh, and, uh, so still, uh, Still, again, our, our best days are ahead. Mac, you mentioned pulling the rope in the same direction, and, and and we've talked about it before. You know, you have great alignment from the top to through you to the coaches, but uh, how difficult is it to set up a culture like that where everybody does have to pull the rope in the same direction and understand, you know, what the what the organizational goals are? Yeah, you know, it it one it takes time. Um, it does. It it takes time and. You know, I, I don't. I don't think it just takes you know three months. I think it takes year, years, um, and um, and you have to be relentless with it. And I think that's that's the right word, relentless. Um, there's not a day we don't work on, it. Um, and it's just little things. Um, it's tiny little things that maybe are out of place that you need to address. Um, that that maybe you know others wouldn't wouldn't think you need to address, but. Um, it's uh it's continual it's it's evolving but it is um you know something that that all of us work work on just constantly relentlessly and uh you know i'm grateful i'm grateful that that our coaches and, and our student athletes and you know people have have just com- completely completely bought bought in and you know i was telling the story to, to some donors on on Saturday and it was um, in the locker room after our men's basketball win at, at Texas. And, um, you know, after the initial kind of celebration dancing, um, Adam Flagler um, spoke in his, his first question or or words out of his mouth were, um, how did the women's basketball team do? And, and I was, I was telling our donors, and like he's not dating anybody on the women's basketball team, so it's just that kind of togetherness and, and camaraderie, and and just that type of culture that that we're continuing to to try to build. Where you know certainly you're you're focused on on your program, but but you're also focused on the on the bigger picture as well. So, Mac, uh, getting a little more specific with, uh, let's start with the men. I mean, co-Big 12 champions along with Kansas about 10 days ago, this wasn't really a thought. I mean, there was maybe some thought that they could have things fall their way, but it was it was a long shot. And they took care of their business, uh, as we outlined last week, got a little help that they needed thanks to TCU, but still had to go and finish the deal. And it by no means was easy on Saturday against Iowa State. But now that they've done it, and they're preparing for the tournament uh, to, to win a Big 12 regular season championship again. Um, the journey that they took to do it, just your, your thoughts on, on what you've seen up to this point. Yeah, I- incredible. You know, those last three games, the, the Kansas game, the, the at-Texas game, and, and then the Iowa State game, like all three of those were, were battles. I mean, just just battles. And uh, just the way our, our young men can, competed, um, just tremendous, just this, this will to win and, you know, never, never any excuses. And I think when you look at the, the, the course of the season, you know, the, the highs and the lows and, um, you know, just 
navigating the the injuries and the, and the different lineups um, from from night to night. Um, never never an excuse. And you know, I think you know Scott's optimism and and just the way he handled adversity really really led the way and, and set the tone. And and by the way, you know, I, I was so I was so happy you know for for him to be be voted by the Big 12 coaches as as Big 12 Coach of the Year again for a for a, a third straight year. I think that's the first time ever in the uh, in in league history. But um, so well deserved, just in terms of how how he navigated you know all of the all of the injuries and 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 again his staff. Um, you know, I I think his staff. I really really believe this that they are the best in the country and I, I know Scott would would tell you that but uh, just a, a tremendous year and, and now an opportunity to you know to compete for for the tournament championship and then you know hopefully go on to to the NCAA tournament as a as a number one seed. And then, of course, we know what the women did and, and just just streaked down the stretch after the 0-2 start. Was there ever a time after a loss or when things were a little bit tough did you ever go to sleep one night and go, I wonder if she's going to get it done? Is it referring to Nikki. No, I, I never, I never thought that, and uh, I, I really didn't. I know that's easy to say now, but but no, uh, I, I I never did. Um, you know, Nikki, Nikki, and I had had you know I don't know one, two, three conversations about just being focused on culture, and and not not you know, worried about, about the results. And, and again, um, uh, she is, she is one tough person and, uh, in her resolve just, to, to continue to, to, to fight through, you know, all of it, uh, that the, some of the, the naysayers and, you know, um, team not playing well initially and, and, and still, you know, buying into, you know, just what they were doing defensively and offensively. And, and again, Speaking to the to the culture, but um, she she did um, you know she did an unbelievable job. Um, I, I think it's one of the best coaching jobs in in the country, um, hands hands down. And um, glad I was I was really happy when uh, she was she was named a, a Naismith Coach of the Year semifinalist today because that um, is uh, is so well deserved. And you know that our team right now is, is playing at a really, really high level. And, you know, that doesn't, that doesn't, you know, mean anything. You, you got to keep, keep doing that and, and, uh, and, and continue to play at that level and, and even try to take it up a, another notch, but um, they're really playing well right now. And uh, Nikki has done a cr- an incredible job and, and, and her staff is, as well. So um, I don't know, just sitting there on Sunday, um, I know that not not only myself, but uh, a lot of other people were just really, really happy, you know, personally for for her and and certainly our our student athletes. Mac Rose, director of athletics at Baylor University, with us on Sikkim three sixty five radio. When I say Dr. David Garland, Doug McNamee, Cheryl Gotchis, Bob Bodine, Kevin Gall, among others, what do you think? I, I think what what uh, what what great people and um, yeah blessed that um, blessed that I had a and grateful that I had a conversation with them about about Baylor University and um, those are uh, those are those are just some some people that I would put in the uh, in the elite uh, category. Mac, uh, football spring practices won't start for, uh, I guess, a few more weeks now. Not that long away. A pro day coming up around the, the corner as well. But uh, the football program still made some some big noise this past weekend at Indianapolis with Tyquan Thornton on Thursday night running a sub-4-3 and then uh, capping off the combine with Kalen Barnes receiving a ton of attention for the second fastest 40 ever. And then JT Woods kind of putting the cherry on top uh, I, kn- I know you have a lot of belief in these guys but as you see them you know starting on their pro journeys and see them you know obviously giving you guys a lot of free marketing good marketing this weekend with what they did I mean what's it like to to see those guys out there having success uh, in their NFL preparations 
Well, I, I think you know where I'm going to go with this, but but it's it's true, and so I'm I'm going to go there. But but first and foremost, those are just three really exceptional young men, um, just just great young men that that did you know um, some some really really uh, great things here at at Baylor, not not just on the football field, but but certainly off as as well, and you know excited for for them, all three of them, and. Uh, you know, for them to perform well under under pressure, um, you know, under that spotlight, and and now, you know, now they have an opportunity to to hopefully be drafted, and, and an opportunity for that that next chapter in their life to, to play at at a at a higher level. And uh, again, just um, I don't know, just proud of them. And, and this weekend, I mean, th- this weekend was um, I don't know, it was it was a little bit overwhelming. Just because of the success of the the two basketball programs, and then then you had the the combine stuff going on, and um, man, um, all all glory to God because um, it. Um, I'm just man, I'm I'm just really blessed to be part of this part of this university. And as I mentioned, man, the really cool thing is um, we uh, our, our our best days. We we still have more out there and. And um, we're we're going to hopefully you know remain remain humble and and no one understand that that can all be taken away tomorrow and uh, and uh, and and just to continue to do it the right way and and uh, fight and scratch like we we've, we've not accomplished anything up to this point. One of our listeners, by the way, I just wanted to pass this along. His name's Ray Grange. Has the uh, Mac Rogers segment has become my favorite segment each week. All the insight and his transparency is something that I absolutely appreciate. He used to be in college athletics. All right, I got to ask you about this. I know you are known for your long phone calls. Is that correct? Yes. So Tony Green uh, last week told me that when he was being interviewed the first couple of times by Nikki Collin by phone, that they had phone calls that were somewhere in the neighborhood of three and four hours. Is that would would we take the over or under with a phone call with Mac Rhodes in an interview? Yeah, one, one it, it's got to be. I'm I'm not doing an interview that long. I'm so. <laughs> <laughs> I I cannot stay locked in that for, for that. like that's like that's a a record. Um, you know, all I'm going to say is bless Tony. So uh, <laughs> all right, so, but. I'd, I'd heard the same thing. So, I'm hey, I'm just glad they, they found each other. Yep, absolutely. So he's a great, great addition to the – him and his family are a great addition to the Baylor family. Last question. Big 12, we know it's going to expand at some point, 2023 for sure, and then perhaps beyond that, depending on what happens with Texas and Oklahoma. Are you for or against or have you thought much about the divisions to go into two different divisions or keep the conference as one? Yeah, you know that's a that's a really great question, and it's a it's a really timely question because I, uh, you know, I, I think there's there's a couple different ways to, to to look at it, right? One is what do you do up until Texas and, and Oklahoma um, leave, and and then and then what do you do post post Oklahoma and and Texas? And, and do you do them the, the same way? And, you know, furthermore, um, you know, do we, do we get to a point in place in, in college football and, and particularly, you know, um, F, FBS where, um, you know, there, there are divisions to, to determine a, a championship. And, and right now there's, there's current legislation that says you, you have to have the, the, the two divisions, you know, depending upon how many how many teams you, you have, and and I just think here in the in the future, you may see that go away and, and really leave it up to, to each conference on on how they want to decide and, and determine their their champion. And so obviously because we we only had ten teams and you know we we were able to get a waiver and you know, everybody, everybody plays one another and, and, and not having the division. So, you know, my, my guess is, you know, we'll probably get to a place where at least initially, um, 
we we have divisions, but you know, twenty five and beyond. I don't know. It'll be interesting. I'm I'm not I'm not going to sit here and say, you know, we're absolutely going to have divisions because I don't I don't know that I okay. could I could see you know all of us getting to a, a point in place in time where where we we uh, we move away from from divisions. I know it's out of your hands. It's a State Department issue, but is there any type of discussion at all you guys have had about Brittany Griner and Russia and being detained? Um, you know, nothing, nothing that 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 I can share. But but certainly, um, you know, we're all worried. Um, and and I know you know that. And she's in our in our prayers, and you know, both her and her family and. Um, obviously her, her safety and, and, uh, is, is a, a great concern, her well being. but, um, praying for her and, um, just, um, uh, hoping that, um, there can be some resolve here in the, in the very, very short, short term. So, um, just, you know, I just ask all of the Baylor family to, to lift her up in, in, uh, in their prayers. Thank you, Mac. Appreciate it. Uh, have fun in Kansas City. Good luck, and uh, we'll see you very soon. Mac Rose, Baylor Director of Athletics, with us Tuesday on Sikkim 365 Radio. Craig Smokes Off the Radar is next. From the first workout to the last practice, sports is an incredible and rewarding challenge. Hi, this is Dan Ingham with the First National Bank of Central Texas, and we're proud to support each athlete, every parent, and our educators. From families, small businesses, to the biggest industry, we're here to help. With remarkable products like our free First Mobile app, we've got banking ideas that fuel big dreams. That's the First National Bank of Central Texas. Familiar faces making local decisions. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Shorty's Pizza Shack at 12th and Bagby is a homegrown, family-owned and operated must-visit pizza place in Waco. Fantastic pizza by the slice or get the whole pie to share. Great happy hour specials every single day. And it's not just pizza. Great wings. You have to try the Sikkim sauce, chili cheese fries, pizza pillows, and more. Dine in for a great hangout or carryout. Order online at shortyspizzashack.com or do yourself a favor and bring your crew to the restaurant at 12th and Bagby. Shorty's Pizza Shack. Tell them Paul sent you by. Three Nations Brewing Company has 16 different beers on draft with a new beer every Friday. It also offers two air-conditioned tap rooms, a large indoor beer hall, a second-floor mezzanine offering a great overview of the brewing company and equipment and patio where you can relax under the shade. Plus, you can now experience the new Three Nations Beer Garden Grill on our shaded patio with socially distant seating for your enjoyment. Grab a cold beer and enjoy a bite from our freshly prepared and delicious menu. Street tacos, quesadillas, freshly cooked burgers and dogs, and veggie burgers too. State Fair tornado fries, nachos, and so much more all prepared and cooked on site. So come visit the award-winning Three Nations Brewing Company on East Vandergrip off I-35 in Carrollton. It's qualified buyers at 2.9% with 5,000 down cash or trade. TTN Electra, see deal for details. The New Year New Ride sales event continues at Richard Carr. Find pre-owned deals like a 2015 GMC Acadia or a 2016 Honda Accord for $227 a month. Or get a 2019 Ram Tradesman truck for $333 a month. Our vehicles go through a 172-point inspection. Get top dollar for your trade and 100% approval is always the goal. Find your next car or truck today at Richard Carr. At Richard Carr, we give you It's plain and simple. Waco Custom Marketplace is the one-stop shop for what you need for tailgating from charcoal, cold beer, and wine. And, of course, customize your order with brisket, tri-tips, sausage, wings, smoked pork tenderloin, country-style or pork spare ribs, marinated beef and chicken fajita meat, ground beef and chili, meat, hot dogs, and burgers, buns, seasoning, sauces, chips. There's fresh-baked bread and kolaches every day, breakfast sausage links, and you can also customize your favorite Favorite cut of steaks from select choice or prime, bacon wrap fillets, ribeyes, New York strips, sirloin, T-bone, and porterhouse. Full service butcher shop includes pork, poultry, beef, chicken, and seafood. Serving Waco restaurants and families since 1940. Your one-stop shop for beef, pork, poultry, and seafood needs. Waco Custom Marketplace, 425 Lake Air Drive, or WacoCustomMarketplace.com.
Welcome back to Sikkim 365 Radio. It's time for Craig Smokes Off the Radar. Brought to you by Pickup Outfitters. Since 1997, we've been outfitting trucks, SUVs, and vans at 220 Lake Air Drive or createacommotion.com. All right, welcome into Off the Radar, taking a look at a few stories uh, outside our normal topics as we do every Tuesday and Thursday at around 4.45 or so. And we're going to start off with uh, LSU basketball. Today, apparently the program received a notice of allegations regarding its uh, invest- the NCAA investigation into its men's basketball program. Uh, this is something that they've been waiting on, and we all know here very well how long this process can take and how long this can be drug out. Do you all remember when the uh, whole federal investigation into college basketball corruption started? It ended in 2017. So, 2017, we're going yeah. back. So it took them five years to do an open records request for Will Wade on a wiretap. Yeah. I mean, like, well, it, you know what? They didn't have to do it. They could just watch the documentary that HBO did and heard it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. What do you... What? What takes five years? Yeah, so when contacted, LSU did not acknowledge that they had received a notice of allegations. Um, This all resolves around, you know, the the basketball investigation. And, um, you know, there's part of the review process. There's just like so many, you know... um, different levels this seems to go through and that's the only way I, I guess it can be described because of is the amount, amount of time that it takes I, I guess there's a lot of uh you know hands in this story but uh will wade if charged with a major violation could be terminated with cause according to si and according to the contract uh, amendment that he agreed to back in april 2019 they reached out to his attorney who also did not have a comment uh, so no idea what LSU would do in that case. Uh, you know, if it were to, to turn out that uh, he is found guilty of a, a major violation or becomes charged with the major violations, but uh, they'll be playing in the um, NCAA tournament. They'll be in the, you know, obviously the SEC tournament comes first, but um, they were, you know, hit with some some infractions, and there was also the stuff going on with football as well. But, uh, yeah, I just wanted to update. LSU has received the notice of allegations for violations in the men's basketball program. So we'll see where that goes. Um, you know, I'm not going to try and predict because, of course, uh, a lot of people predicted Baylor like the day it was announced the NCAA was investigating, and they were all pretty much wrong. For so. five years, it was in the death penalty phase. And then, yeah, and you wondered out what's next with Kansas. And uh, that's got to be something that's got to be on the table, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, the, you're Kansas scared is, to talk about that. Kansas, no, Kansas has been waiting. I mean, eventually, like, I was going to say, like, how long have they been? For, they're kind of waiting it. like Baylor was, you yeah. want the answer. That's so the worst part on. is yeah. the waiting. Because the waiting is the worst part. It is hurting Kansas' recruiting right yeah, now. It yeah. is. All right. So Wade had been caught back five years ago uh, on FBI wiretaps talking to, to then agent Christian Dawkins, talking about the uh, prospect Javante Smart. And remember the, the phrase was that strong-ass offer that they were going to make Javante Smart. Uh, he, of course, ended up at LSU, played three seasons. And uh, Dawkins recently began serving his jail term in Alabama. He's got an 18-month sentence on bribery and conspiracy charges. And then you had a couple of Adidas execs who are also currently serving time and a bunch of assistant coaches and, who were found guilty. So this was not just a Will Wade thing, but he's the one that's kind of gotten through it without as much heat as uh, a lot of the others. For the Adidas guys and Christian Dawkins, it has to kind of suck that uh, if you just waited a couple years, uh, what yeah. you're doing is totally legal now. No kidding. I mean, pretty much, yeah. Pretty much. I uh, uh, could have just called it NIL. Didn't, didn't I, he basically tell LSU to screw themselves and you better not fire me? Didn't yeah, he yeah. fight it? Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. No, he he he, he fought he back. Yeah. Do you wonder about sitting in prison like, hey, what are you in for? Like, oh, I'm in for something that's not that's uh, legal now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just in general, even if it was illegal, what are you in prison for? Uh, I was trying to swing mega deals for college basketball prospects. What would you do? I killed a guy. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, a, that's, a, that's the toughest crime ever. It's like the NFL suspensions with the Ridley getting you know a year, which he knew going in. That's not something you do. And then somebody can beat their wife or have domestic violence or assault, and they're Eight out games. for four games. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. And, and yeah, the NFL has and a real issue with that. And I'm not arguing against Ridley's suspension. I'm just saying it sometimes seems like it's a, a weird one or two. Yeah, uh, as March Madness starts, a little update on Dick Vitale. He uh, posted on Tuesday that his most recent scan indicates that no cancer is showing. He said, uh, OMG, all the prayers many of you have sent 
um, have been answered as Dr. Brown, who heads my cancer team, called and said, uh, pet scan came back, no cancer is showing. I feel like a coach playing for the Final Four as a PTP or hit a shot at the buzzer. My March Madness starts with a W, baby. So he had been diagnosed with lymphoma back in the fall, and he had come back, and he would made his way through Waco, uh, right, once before? Uh, before his his yeah. eventual break, right before, uh, yeah, because they had the big yep. the whole to do, uh, and then he had a diagnosis of a dysplasia on his vocal cords, and and you know left the airwaves uh, to recover. So he had surgery on his vocal cords back in February, and then was released from the hospital. So Dickie V with a, a nice positive report, and uh, hopefully uh, he gets better soon. Uh, and also in uh, sports media news. Uh, this is not official, uh, but I do. I will have another Amazon note in a second that has nothing to do with football, but very much some things to do with sports. But uh, Kirk Herbstreit is uh, getting looking more and more locked in to uh, to be joining the Amazon crew as an NFL analyst that will be in addition to his ESPN duties. That's the key there. Yeah, he's going to do be able to continue to do college football, which I wondered about that. Peter King talked about this today. He said, "I heard last night that Amazon, spurned by Troy Aikman, Sean McVay, and John Lynch, has settled on Kirk Herbstreit to be the analyst on his Thursday night package of NFL games starting this fall. He's likely to continue his current ESPN ABC duties as well." Andrew Marchand uh, of the New York Post had this first uh, and and it alluded to this first as well so looks like yeah he'll be double dipping and uh what he had made some comments here recently about it that really made it sound like the nfl was heavy on his mind and so and, and a way he was really starting to lean but i know he also loves college football so uh, we'll see how it all shakes out in the end but it does appear there's more and more signs indicating herb street is amazon bound yeah, and and he does well during games so I, I i like games that he does you know i don't i think most people I think most people in college football don't really share Kirk Herbstreit's opinion on everything. And right. the, the NFL will love him because one thing he is, is he is, uh, I don't want to use the term shill, but he's an advocate for the, uh, for the establishment. Yeah, the NFL will like that. Yeah, of course they will. I mean, that's what they're yeah, all about. His comments the when Cincinnati made it. Were just that it, it was See, so good. There's it was, no problem. It was beneath. Okay. It was beneath. Him. That was that was a lame. Yeah, yeah, that was a lame reasoning. It's like the playoffs totally fine because this one team randomly made it this year. Like that was that was such a weak argument. To, I like Herbie, to, but that was a weak to, argument. To me, that was like listen. Tommy got to go to the prom with his aunt. It's I mean he got to go. What's the problem? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. So we will see uh, again when that becomes official, but it does like Herb Street will be doing Amazon, NFL, and then uh, his typical ESPN, ABC college football duties. Another sports media note, Dur Doris Burke has reached a multi-year extension with ESPN, so uh, she is going to continue doing uh, NBA games, NBA playoffs, regular season, she'll do the finals on ESPN radio, and uh, an uh, NBA Sunday showcase on ABC, but uh, I like Doris Burke. Think she does a great job. So yeah, just a little media note. Uh, we talk about athletes' contracts. Yeah, that's yeah. good. So uh, good for her getting a a, a new deal. Uh, I was I was talking about Amazon. I was meaning to say Apple, Amazon, and Herb Street. Like that's all what I said. All all there, but staying in streaming apple is the one that had the big announcement today not amazon i got the two confused for a moment but apple announced uh, along with major league baseball uh, today that they have agreed to a streaming deal this streaming deal between mlb and apple tv will see two friday night games exclusively on apple tv plus every single week starting with the 2022 season Friday Night Baseball. It'll have live pregame and postgame shows. It'll be available in the U.S. and several uh, other countries. Apple TV also has a program that they are calling MLB Big Inning for U.S. viewers, uh, which they described as a live show, basically a sports center, featuring highlights and look-ins airing every weeknight during the regular season. Um, you can watch marquee games every Friday, which will be free from local broadcast restrictions, which is a big deal. So you won't have those blackout issues that so many people complain about. I'm in Chicago. I can't even watch the White Sox or, you know, whatever. That will not be an issue. Uh, but that will take away a couple games if you are an MLB uh, TV subscriber. Those will be 
two games that are no longer a part of that package. But we've been talking for a long time about the streaming wars and how sports is going to be involved. And you see Amazon making their big push with the NFL and now Apple getting into Major League Baseball. Well, I, I'm, I'm curious to see if Apple gets the Sunday ticket contract is up with DirecTV this year and AT&T has not made the move to re-sign that. So I would think that it is probably going to Apple or Amazon next year, which is uh, opens it up to way more different people who can get it and grab a cafeteria plan or if it's apple what what you've has been reported is that the nfl thinks apple can just take it and if you pay your 6.99 or whatever the apple subscription is you just get the sunday ticket that'd yeah that'll be, awesome. be that'll be staggering <laughs> that would be and, awesome and then of course you hope they start to get involved in wanting college football yeah because yeah. apple can apple can afford it because their gdp is larger than most countries yeah Certainly larger than one I can think of right now yeah. <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, all right, a uh, couple of other notes, and then we'll we'll bail out here. Uh, if you're a women's basketball fan, in particular a WNBA fan, uh, ESPN announced today that they are set to launch uh, WNBA Fantasy. The surprising they haven't actually had this, given how popular fantasy sports are, but uh, ESPN did announce that they are going to be incorporating and introducing ESPN Fantasy Women's Basketball first season-long fantasy game ever dedicated dedicated to a major women's sport. It'll be open for signups in early April ahead of the 2022 WNBA season, which tips off on May the 6th. So if you're a fantasy fan and also a WNBA fan, there's a little thing for you uh, starting here in just a few weeks. And then uh, just taking a quick look, because we talked about Dalton Schultz and the, and the franchise tag, uh, but just taking a quick look at uh, some of the guys who got franchise tagged today and Paul or, you know, Smokey, if you want to chime in on this, uh, Buccaneers with Godwin. wide receiver Chris Godwin. I great, great, great idea. Yeah, they <laughs> tag. Yeah, huge, huge year for him. Jaguars placed the tag on offensive tackle Cam Robinson. Uh, I mean, you got to protect Trevor Lawrence, although Cam Robinson's not the guy I'd want to pay $15 million to. But mm. I mean, what's your alternative? Yeah, now going to be making close to 17 uh, with yeah. that franchise tag. Devontae Adams tagged by the Packers. So a big day for Green Bay football. No, no brainer. And glad that, that Jack gets to, you know, Buy a Devonte Adams jersey that means something. Yeah, uh, Chiefs tagged left tackle Orlando Brown, who they brought over last off season's former Oklahoma Sooner. Played at the Ravens before that. Yeah, he was at the Ravens. Yep, and uh, then the Chiefs traded for him. Uh, Bengals tagged uh, safety Jesse Bates. Browns tagged tight end David and Joku, and uh, the Dolphins tagged. Uh, Mike Gesicki, the, their, their tight end, who had a pretty uh, nice year. So uh, those were the, the tagged the, players. The only one I don't get is David Njoku just because he's been so injury prone, although this is the best year he's had. And if Baker Mayfield has some sort of rhythm with him, I think you have to at least for one more year with Baker Mayfield uh, try to see if that works because you need to do everything you can to help your quarterback out. Mm -hmm. Who's better, Dalton Schultz, Schultz or David Njoku? Uh, Dalton Schultz has had the better numbers over the last two years. So, mm. you know, David Njoku was a higher, much higher draft pick than Dalton Schultz was. Yeah, he so, was. Okay. Um, yeah, he was. He was a part of that big package of picks that they had. Uh, I, forget, I get the drafts confused because they had so many multiple first round and first or a second round pick drafts. They had like three of those in the last 15 years. But uh, yeah, he was a part of one of those those years. And then there were a bunch of other signings as well. I won't run all those down. If you're interested, you can, you can obviously go and check that out. And uh, I'll leave you with the Dion story. I know that you uh, were, were yeah, very interested I, in that one, and I'll, and I'll leave it there. Those were a few things that are off the radar. We'll have Jalen Petrie here in a moment uh, from former Baylor, a defensive back, linebacker, hybrid, whatever. Um, Dion Sanders has a uh, – uh, there's a, a series, and I think the last series or last episode is coming up. He admitted uh, last year he missed 23 days. He had his left foot amputated. Two toes on his left foot amputated. <laughs> Two toes, is, not the whole remember, left foot. Remember, primetime yeah. had an issue with his feet when he was with the Cowboys late in his career. He started having some problems with that. But he had it basically what looks like shrapnel had blown part of his leg. Not shrapnel. I'm not trying to compare that to war, but that's what it looked like. He had surgery for that. He missed a few games. Apparently had blood clots in his leg that created two toes that were blocked because of no blood flow. He had numerous surgeries, several surgeries, and uh, it's 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 pretty amazing if you have not watched it on Barstool Sports, Coach Prime. That episode in itself could be similar to Alex Smith and his comeback story in the NFL. Well, I mean, it was a little deeper than that. I mean, they had to flay his leg open. So they had to flay his leg open because he had a blood clot in his femoral artery. 
That's a pretty big deal. That's yeah. a pretty big. He is. He had a blood clot in his femoral artery. They had to flay his leg. He also had compartment syndrome where the leg swells up. So that was part of the reason why they had to flay it was because they needed to drain fluid out of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was just one aspect of it. Uh, but yeah, his big toe and uh, his second toe amputated because of blood clots and and uh, all the issues that came with that. Uh, and they had apparently been talking, and he says it in the series, I believe, that uh, they were talking about taking uh, his leg from the knee down. Um, yep. And ultimately ended up just taking two toes instead. I mean, that's still horrific, but, I mean, it could have been far worse. Can somebody turn the air conditioner on because I'm about to pass out because I am that thin skin and stuff scary, like that. man. Mm-hmm. And I remember the pictures of the Alex Smith thing. And 54 years old, one of the fastest ever athletes ever in any sport. And now he, of course, was talking about wanting to whether or not live, much less be able to walk again. That's why you've seen him on that push cart for quite some time throughout last season. Craig, thank you very much. Steven Snook just put up on the chat room how much he loves both off the radar and also, Paul, your top five as well. Now let's go eat after that. But when we come back, when we come back, uh, Jalen Petrie, Baylor linebacker, safety, uh, his thoughts about the combine and where he is. That's next on Sikkim 365 Radio, YouTube 365 Sports. It's Ram Truck Month at Allen Samuels. The new 2022 Ram 1500 Lone Star Crew Cab has all the quality for work or play. Impressive towing capabilities, heavy-duty payload capacity, smooth ride, and an interior design is why Ram is the first truck ever to win number one overall in initial quality, according to J.D. Power. When looking for a truck that can do it all, come see the possibilities. First responders get a $500 discount. Shop DCJ.com or come in and see the huge selection of brand new cars and trucks. Come Come by. Let's be friends. It takes time to reach goals. It's a truth that applies to more than sports. It goes for your financial goals as well. You work hard for your money, and you deserve an investment strategy that lines up with your game plan. And Tom Albers, your Edward Jones financial advisor, can help. If your financial investments aren't putting forth the effort you desire, stop by today for a financial review. Tom Albers, 4301 Lakeshore Drive, 254-776-7605. Edward Jones, member SIPC. want to know why Stonewood Dental is so successful? Listen to what happy customers have to say. It's pleasant. It's different than any other dentist's office. I really feel like they care. And it's not that you're here for two hours waiting on someone to take care of you. It's quick and easy. And, you know, I bring my kids and my kids love being here too. They really love the treasure box. Staff is really nice and accommodating, real friendly. You feel more like home. It's not sterile looking. Everybody has their own personalized rooms with decorations and decor, and they'll even have a blanket for you when it's cold. (laughs) I've recommended people to actually come here, and they are patients now. I really love it here. It feels like family. Learn more, stonewood-dental.com. Riverbend Liquor and Wine, Lakeshore Drive at North 19th Street in Waco is a hidden gem. They've got a great selection of spirits, wine, and the most extensive selection of craft beer in Waco and their gorgeous walk-in fridge. And they have an amazing array of high-end bourbons like Pinhook, Weller, Buffalo Trace, Brush Creek, Hotel, Garrison Brothers, Thomas S. Moore, Hooten Young, and Bardstown. Great customer service and a convenient and speedy drive through window. Riverbend Liquor and Wine. Find out more on Facebook and Instagram. Stepping into a new pair of boots is great, but stepping into the boots of a U.S. Army officer can also add confidence and leadership skills to your son or daughter's career path. There are more than 150 occupational specialties to help them find the best fit for their future. See all the things your son or daughter can achieve in our boots at GoArmy.com. U.S. Army Waco Recruiting Company, 254-598-8131 or 254-776-1543. 
With so many companies and policies out there, it gets so confusing shopping for insurance, and I never know if I'm getting the policy that's right for me. Luckily, I met the team at the Nitchie Group Insurance Agency. With the Nitchie Group, you can go to one company and get access to coverage options from many insurance carriers, and you get to speak to a real person about your specific coverage needs. With the Nitchie Group, I know I'm getting the right coverage at the right price. If you need insurance, talk to the experts at the Nitchie Group at 1-800-258-8302. Welcome back to Sikkim 365 Radio. They're going to throw and they're going to score. It is Thornton celebrating with his teammates. The 5 o'clock hour is sponsored by Edward Jones Investments with financial advisor Ben Erlinson, who will navigate you through today's financial climate. Edward Jones, making sense of investing. Now, here's David Smoke, Paul Catalina, and Craig Smoke. All Baylor segments brought to you by Richard Carr Motors on Loop 340 in Waco. And this one with former Baylor, well, he did everything. He was the Swiss Army Knife in Jalen Petrie, who's been at the Combine. He joins us now on Sikkim 365 Radio. Craig Smoke, Paul Catalina, and David Smoke, one of our favorite players and stories in Baylor football history, Jalen Petrie. Jalen, is it a relief the combine is over? Yes, sir. It was a fun, a fun, long experience, but, you know, it, it's nice to kind of check that off your list. Can you try to explain the anxiety, even though you were prepared, you know what kind of an athlete you are, and you could do a lot of things. Can you kind of explain maybe some of the anxiety leading into it? Yes, sir. So, you know, we, we trained for about um, two months, three months after after our bowl game is over. And then, you know, you have to get those numbers right. So it's a bit, you know, um, you worry a lot about what your numbers are going to be. So it, it was a little hard, you know, throughout this whole process. But kind of when I showed up, I kind of figured that all, all the work was done. So that kind of helped me you know, relax a little bit and just, you know, rely on, on all the work that I had put in. You know, I was very confident uh, with my drills and with all, you know, the vertical and all those different things. So I was very confident. It wasn't worrying as much as I thought I would when, when I, when I you know, arrived in, in Indy. Jalen, what's it like to have 15 different job interviews essentially back to back to back for, I guess it's what, they get 15, 20 minutes with you each team? Yes, sir. It was it was fifteen minute interviews, and it I thought it would be a lot harder than it was. But then once I thought about it, um, you're basically just telling these coaches why they should pick you and why you know you're a good player and why they're a good person. So um, that was that was a bit of the easy part for me, you know, just being able to you know kind of give these coaches and you know the the NFL staff my you know personality and the type of guy I am. I felt like that was probably. Um, the easiest part of, of the combine. So, Jalen, your, your time at Baylor has, is wrapped up, uh, but just, you know, before looking forward some more, because you're going to be doing a lot of that here, looking back, man, I mean, your journey, uh, it's been talked about quite a bit, but this this past season with the, the Big 12 title, the Sugar Bowl, I mean, how, what did that mean to you personally, given all that you've been through in Waco? It means a lot. You know, it means the world. Me and my teammates, you know, like you said, we won the Big 12 championship. And it couldn't have came at, at, at a better time. You know, all the work that we put in over these years and um, the hard times that we've had, you know, it eventually paid off. And I'm forever grateful for everybody that, you know, trusted me and that poured into me while I was at Baylor. So, you know, I'm very thankful for that. And I wouldn't trade that, you know, time at Baylor for anything. You know, that that that's kind of, you know, molded me into the person I am right now. Jalen, your strength was you could do most anything, play most anywhere, and eventually you, you ended up in the star position with Coach Aranda, but you were moved around under Coach Rule and Phil Snow as well. What is uh, the thought among NFL scouts, GMs, or whoever else? What have they said about, is that the strength for you as well in the NFL? Yes, sir, definitely. You know, the versatility is a huge thing in the NFL because the rosters aren't as aren't as big as college teams. And, you know, sometimes you may have to move around a lot. So that's definitely one of my strong points. With that, you know, I'm able to pick up defenses and, you know, schemes very fast. So that also helps me, 
Um, it helps me a lot and allows me to, you know, learn a lot of the different pieces. So, you know, I take pride in that and I try to, you know, be the best wherever my coaches put me. Jalen Petrie with us on Sikkim 365 Radio 365 Sports. Do you feel like you could play corner as well in the NFL? Um, I wouldn't say I will be a corner. That's not something that I've uh, played. Um, if, if you're consider, considering the nickel position a corner, I would say yes. But um, for the most part, I would say I'm a nickel and uh, a strong safety and weak safety. I mean, free safety. I'm sorry. Jalen, what was it like to see – Taekwon go out there on Thursday night and pop that huge 40 time. Everybody was talking about Baylor football. I mean, you did well. Terrell and what he did did pretty well. And then, you know, by the end, Sunday, you had Kalen there, obviously, uh, you know, setting the, the second highest, fastest mark ever in combine history. And then JT kind of, you know, putting the cherry on top. I mean, what was that like just as a group of teammates? You've been through all the wars together to see uh, your friends and your teammates having success like that and getting some attention. Yes, sir. It, it was great to see that. You know, I, I've seen the work that these guys have put put in. And, you know, I knew these guys were really fast, but uh, they definitely turned it up a notch. You know, these guys are working as hard as possible. And, you know, it was good to see that the work paid off for them again, you know. I root for guys that, you know, always, you know, are putting their best foot forward. And everybody that came to the combine this year did that. And I'm, I'm proud of those guys. And I hope to, you know, see those guys continue to improve on whatever they're doing. You have, uh, of course, practice against uh, Tyquan and Tres Nebner and, and Abram Smith, but particularly for Tyquan Thornton, who we had on earlier today, his route running got really, really good uh, over last offseason into this year. How tough is he for – for people to cover, for you to match up with him and, and keep up with what he's trying to do? Yes, sir. Todd Kwan, I think he's a, he's, a, he's a complete receiver. He can do it all. You know, he's very tough and competitive. Um, if you ask him to, to block, he's going to do that. If you ask him to run any route on a route tree, he can do that. You know, he's just a complete receiver, and any NFL team, you know, that is able to choose him will, will be getting a, a great pick. So I look forward to seeing where Todd Kwan lands up, and I know – you know, he'll do great wherever he's at. Jalen, was uh, the story about you and your commitment to Baylor and keeping that commitment during the coaching transition ever brought up by anybody during the interviews? Yes, sir. Uh, coaches bring that up because that's kind of uh, um, kind of ties into the character mm -hmm. uh, uh, part of the interview. And, you know, they just asked me the reason behind that. And I told them Baylor is a great school. You know, if, if anybody is given a chance to – you know, play football at, at Baylor and also, you know, be it in Waco and have the nice perks that we had as, as student athletes, I think it will be an easy decision to make. So that's what kind of uh, went into my answer when they asked about it. And, you know, like I said, I wouldn't change that that commitment for anything. I think that you could write a book on just your, your commitment, keeping the commitment and your years at Baylor. Could I know you don't have time for that right now. I may never, but that I would, I would buy it. And I mean, I'm serious. I think that'd be an amazing book with all your stories. I, I agree. I, basically down the line, maybe that could be, you know, done. But like you said, right now, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit busy. <laughs> yeah, you got a few things going gotta, on right now. Hopefully, <laughs> yeah. hopefully for the next 10 or 12 or plus years, you're going to be busy with your football career. Uh, Jalen, yeah. how did you see Dave Aranda grow as a head coach, and how did your relationship uh, develop with him over the last couple of years? Yes, sir. Coach Aranda, you know, he 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 grew on us. You know, early on when he got in, you know, we wasn't sure on the type of coach that he was because he was a bit of a different style. But as you've seen through, throughout those two years, you know, we all, you know, gravitate, gravitated towards him. And, you know, things – that he taught us, I wouldn't trade for anything. And, you know, I think the biggest thing that he helped me out with was my patience. You know, Coach Aranda is a very patient individual, and he takes time and thought with whatever he's doing. And, you know, I try to model myself after him. So um, he's a great guy, and I think any guy that wants to, you know, play college football, Baylor is definitely the right place because you're, you're going to learn football, but you're also going to become a better person while doing that. So Coach Aranda and his staff are great, and, I continue to – I can't wait to watch the success of Baylor football in these next couple of years. 
Jalen, you did uh, some stuff for us in this uh, last season where you did kind of a weekly diary that people can find uh, still on our, our boards, I believe, if they if they look for it. Jack and Armstrong uh, worked with you. And my question for you is not necessarily about that. I'm just curious if Jack and Armstrong were always nice to you because they're not always nice to us. No, they're not. No, they're not. I was, Jack and Armstrong were the best, man. They always <laughs> go when I came in and, you know, they, they were they were professionals at, at their job. So, you know, I was grateful you know, to work with them in the time that I did. And, you know, it was really fun to go up there every week and kind of document, you know, about the game week and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, they were the best of the best. They were professionals in, in, in their job. Are, are we in that category? We're going to edit that out of the interview later when we post it. <laughs> we're, uh, I mean, we were. Sick of 365, you know, y'all always on top of things. And, you know, I'm always on the lookout for the next story on whoever is that best. <laughs> there you there. go. There you go. We appreciate that. Jalen Petrie with us, Second 365 Radio. Now, I mentioned the story of you. There are some fans, and I know that it's kind of a, a, a like a, you don't do it because you're so young and your life in front of you, but there are some fans, because of your loyalty to Baylor, that feel like in some way there needs to be something named or something after you. Have you ever gotten that kind of feeling from Baylor fans about your loyalty and commitment that they would like to honor you in some way with whatever it might be? Definitely. You know, Baylor fans are always showing love, and, you know, they're very supportive of all athletics. Um, I have heard a couple of things, but, you know, I think time will tell on what the university, um, if, if they want to do something like that. But, you know, I was just grateful to go to the school. Anything else that the school wants to do for me, you know, will be an extra bonus. So, like I said, I'm, I'm thankful for just getting a, a degree from Baylor, and it was a great experience. How tight was that football team based on a lot of you that had been through the ups and downs, 1-11 and 11, all the way to winning the Sugar Bowl championship in the Big 12? How, how tight was that group, not just those who were there four or five years, but others as well? Yes, sir. It was extremely tight, you know, and it wasn't, it wasn't fake love. You know, in these practices, you know, we, we fought and we tussled, but um, for the greater good of the team. And I think that's why, you know, you've seen us um, kind of, you know, rise to the top at the end of the season. We we had a lot of, you know, dogs on our team and guys that was willing to do anything to win. And when you have that, you know, you end up seeing teams that um, kind of succeed like we did. So the team was very tight. Even the young guys, you know. Coach Aranda and his staff does a great job of helping us, you know, bond off the field. So that definitely helped. And, you know, I feel like the, the overall camaraderie of the team was kind of what helped us, you know, win the games that we did and uh, pull off the Big 12 championship at the end. So, uh, Jalen, uh, the last fourth down play for Oklahoma State in the Big 12 championship game. Uh, I asked Tyquan. Obviously, Tyquan's on offense, so he wasn't, you know, sitting there playing defense at that moment. He said he was standing at the 50 and just went crazy. But can you just kind of take us through your uh, perspective on the big fourth down against Oklahoma State that ended up winning you guys a Big 12 championship? Yes, sir. So, as you all know, that was a, a bit of a long drive for us on defense. You know, Oklahoma State was driving and um, – we ended up stopping them three times and um, ended up being fourth down. And, um, you know, I was, I was a bit nervous because they were on the one, obviously, and, you know, they didn't have far to go. And when the ball was snapped, they ended up getting to the outside, like you guys seen it. Um, McVay ended up making a, a, a great play. You know, I tell a lot of people if I had to leave my kids with anybody, um, McVay would probably be on – near or top of that list because he is very, you know, uh, dependable and I, I could trust him with, with anything. So it was great to see him make the play and get, you know, the praise that, you know, he deserved at the end of the season because he's a hard worker and he does a lot for this team. So that's what, that's what went through my head during the play and uh, after the play as well. I just can't imagine what that – I mean, for you guys to do that three times and have that last play, I mean, that, that was just – that was incredible. I mean, it's, it's almost unbelievable when you look back on it. And I can only imagine just the, the emotional – like uh, – uh, like the emotions dump that that, that happened because of uh, how hyped up you guys had to be for that final play. Was it just like uh, – I don't know. Did you get almost weak from just like letting it go afterwards? Exactly. That, that's a great way to describe it. It kind of felt like a movie. 
Mm. Um, at the end, like, you know, when a team wins on um, the last play, like buzzer beater type. Uh, but, yeah, it, it felt like you could finally breathe again. <laughs> you were holding your breath the whole time, and you could finally, like, kind of let go. And, you know, that's what we did, and we had a great celebration after. And, you know, just that team, it, it was a fun experience, and it, it meant the world to, you know, come out with that win. Do, do you get emotional when you see it? Like, if you see the replay again, does it hit you, like, how close that was? Mm-hmm. Definitely. Every time I watch it, you know, I get chills in my body, you know, just – you know, understanding how close we were and how, how it could have went the other way and just McVay being able to make that big play, it, it was it was wonderful. Jalen, did you see Coach Rule? Uh, I'm sure you did. I mean, he's at the Combine. Everyone's there. Did you have a chance to visit with him at all? Uh, yes, sir. I've seen Coach Rule in the hallway um, and, and got to speak with him uh, very briefly. But, you know, it, it was all love between me and Coach Rule, and I told him that, I was very thankful for everything that he did, you know, with my career while he was he was there at Baylor. All right, so the cover's not bare. There's a lot of guys coming back, as you know, that were a part of the success. You guys, though, are some grown blank men with what you did during your time at Baylor who are moving on to the next level or who may not play football again in some cases. What's it like in that locker room with that depth and the seasoning and the talent as they move forward? Oh, yes. The, the team is, 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 is in a good spot. You know, we have a lot of good guys that played last year still on the team. And we also have some guys that are going to be stepping into, uh, you know, bigger roles. And throughout last year, you know, you could see those younger guys watching and soaking in as much knowledge as possible in order to, you know, fulfill, fulfill that role to the best of their ability. So, you know, I'm eager to see what the team looks like uh, this year and, you know, I'm ready to, you know, be at uh, spring practice when I can and, you know, just try to pour, keep pouring into those uh, players as much as possible because, you know, they're still my brothers even though I'm, I'm, I'm not playing with them anymore. All right. So you have an agent, obviously, the pro days, March the 30th. How much of what you do now is what you want to do and how much, of course, is going back into the uh, whatever it would be to, to get yourself ready for everything else in front of you? Yes, sir. So I'm, I'm, I'm obviously getting ready for pro day, but um, I definitely want to keep my, you know, day-to-day football stuff intact as well, you know, because uh, rookie minicamp is, is, is right after pro day, probably I think a month and a little bit, a couple of days after that. So, you know, I'm definitely trying to stay crisp in all my movements. So um, I'm looking forward to that, and I'm, I'm always going to have football around, you know, I take pride in catching the ball as a defense player as well. Man, I tell you what, you were so much fun to watch grow up. Also, see how you played the game with such amazing passion, with so many guys that have a chance. Coach Rule, when he recruited you guys, said that he wanted to recruit guys that had upside once they got, you know, it marinate within the system. He wanted to recruit guys who could run and play and become pros. And then, of course, Coach Aranda then added even more to that with what he put on with the icing in the last couple of years. Is that something that was said to you? Is that something that, that registered with you? And now that you look at it, how much it came true? Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say so. You know, throughout my whole career, I never really looked forward to the NFL. I was always, you know, focused on um, where I was at the time because – I, as a player, I never – like, the NFL seemed so far. Mm-hmm. Um, now, looking back on it, all the work that I did put in, you know, is, you know, now paying off. So, um, if I could give any advice to any college player, I would say, you know, take care of the now because yeah. um, you can be stripped of that really quickly. You know, I had a couple injuries in my career, and I easily could have been, you know, sidetracked by those. So, I would say while you're in college, have as much fun as possible and enjoy the moment because um, you're not going to be able to turn around once you, you know, become a professional if, if that's in, you know, God's plan for you. Jalen, thank you very much. Appreciate everything you represent, what you've done. Good luck going forward. We'll see you March the 30th. Yes, sir. Yeah, have a good one. I appreciate y'all having me on today. And, and Jack and Armstrong are in the studio and they're smiling because of what you said, which we know is true. Thank you very much, Jalen Petrie with us on Sikkim 365 Radio and 365 Sports. And James Paulson on the chat room, I tuned into the show, the young blood, give the young blood Emery Winter some love. 
Wow. Well, I mean, he never, I don't know. Do you know Jalen Petrie? That was, you guys, are you friends with him at all? That no, was signed, Jay, that was signed a, by Emery. Weird. Oh, okay. yeah, that was weird. Yeah. <laughs> Emery, oh, Emery James Paulson Winter. Was that on the mm. chat room who put that up to yeah. get that out? I was asking because, you know, Jack and Armstrong, you know, weekly dealt with Jalen, did a very good job of, of doing that. And I just wondered if Jalen got better treatment than, than I do, particularly from Jack. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, it's Jalen <laughs> it's Jalen freaking Petrie. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I mean, so, come on. you know. That guy in Russia gets better treatment from Jack than, than <laughs> we do sometimes. Yeah. Uh, JG sounds like a decent young man. He's, he is. That's one of the things about the guys who are there. You never know. People make mistakes at 22 or 25 or 17 or 50. There's no question. But the ones who have been at the combine, at what they have been, and you hope they stay who they are, the core of what they meant at Baylor and what Baylor meant to them as well, they all seem to be somebody that when it came to the interviews – when it came to the character check, it came to all of that. I don't think there's anything, a blemish among any of them, but you never know. No, I mean, you could take like three or four of that crop of seven and have like an all interview team very, very easily, yeah, like yeah. very easily. And uh, I, you know, there's times like anybody who covers a, covers a college beat, there'll be times that you hear like rumors, of, you know, dude got into it at a bar, you know, stuff like that randomly. Um, on occasion not not by any means very often and you just you know you hear it's college kids and and stuff happens but uh, i can say with those seven guys i don't think there was ever even a whiff of a rumor about anything it's the worst no. thing jalen petrie is such a good dude like, oh yeah i would think that if he took an extra sauce at chick-fil-a he'd be like i didn't use this oh no he'd take it back <laughs> he'd been <laughs> feels guilty what, about this is wasteful you know everybody <laughs> does that though with the people they like oh our guys are the you know we're the ones with class and whatever and like i, I that's such such bs but uh i can say without and do it without like the homer cap on like those are all like seven really good dudes and and uh and jalen in particular uh you can you can you definitely uh you know take them home to 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 the house and they fit right in take i mean like they're just they're just great people and uh you don't have to worry about them i think it's gonna go uh and bear very well for them uh in the pros and you know i expect them all to to have great careers i mentioned the conference championships that are going on and i just saw this note from jeff goodman i did not know that uh that uh, jacksonville state is in the championship game uh in the uh at, at, what is it the uh was it the Atlantic Sun? I'm not sure what conference that is. But Baylor Mean is also in that game. But if they win, they cannot go to the tournament because they are still a part of a four-year transition window in the Division I. Jacksonville State, oh, they're not even in the championship game. They're the number one seed. So if Baylor Mean wins, and I hope I'm getting that right, uh, Jacksonville State goes. Whoever beats Baylor Mean, I mentioned that earlier, would go to the NCAA tournament if it's not them. Just a couple of notes. Well, They're Jacksonville playing. State just coming up roses all year this Actually, year. Actually, no, they are. And it says Jacksonville State that gets the odd I mean, no, 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 no. Jacksonville State was the number one seed, lost to Jacksonville. Jacksonville is not Jacksonville State. Jacksonville, University of Jacksonville. I think mean, it's where Artis Gilmore went to school. So, what? I'm trying to understand here. If Bellarmine's when the ace, it would be Jacksonville State that gets the auto bid. Yeah. Yeah. Not not Jacksonville is playing. There must be Jacksonville and Jacksonville State. I did not know that. Uh, that was in the same conference. Jacksonville, back in the early 70s when UCLA dominated college football, one year, Artist Gilmore, the great Artist Gilmore, uh, was a part of them, and they went to a deep run in the championship, uh, in the tournament. We've talked about Jacksonville State too much. I'm, I'm having flashbacks. Hmm. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Forgot about that. All right, when we come back, John McClain. Man, what a day it's been in the National Football League with the Packers and Aaron Rodgers, the Broncos and the Seahawks and quarterback trade and the Cowboys cutting back. And now the possibility of who, what happens with Deshaun Watson coming up on Friday in court. Sikkim 365 Radio, 365 Sports. Baylor University is where lights shine bright. So let there be light. <laughs> Let there be roommates and teammates, scholarship and championships. Let there be fresh starts and new traditions, fast friendships and lasting impacts. Let there be laughter. Let there be joy. Let there be light. Baylor University, where lights shine bright. 
Brad Boozer, Boozer Jeweler, joins us on Sikkim 365 Radio. And I've seen people walk in there. You, first of all, you have so much to show. Whether necklaces, bracelets, rings. You have the watches. You have numerous great watches as well. You really have pretty much everything, don't you, when it comes to jewelry? That's correct. Kind of a one-stop shop and all. And the fact that we have the two jewelers on staff, the repairs we can do, the fixing of your jewelry, and the remaking of any jewelry has really set us apart from anybody else. You want to know why they're successful? Brad Boozer, the owner of Boozer's Jewelers on the corner of Valley Mills and Lake Air in Waco. Texas Farm Bureau Insurance has protected fellow Texans with auto, home, health, and life insurance since 1952. With more than 260,000 square miles of land and 27 million people, that's a lot to cover. Whether you're wrangling cattle or wrangling kids, we're proud to protect Texans in all Texan ways of life. Stop by and see our agents at one of our three McLennan County locations. Coverage and discounts are subject to qualifications and policy terms and may vary by situation. Did you know that one out of every four men have symptomatic low levels of testosterone and don't even know it? And if you think you're too young to worry about it, guess again. Low T levels can make you feel tired and grumpy, cause weight gain, and wreak havoc on your sexual desire and performance. Petty Clinic Low T can set up same-day blood screening and results, so if you're tired of being tired, I challenge you to man up and Google search Low T Waco or go online PettyClinicLowT.com. It's a private clinic with an atmosphere catering to men. Affordable, only $150 a month, includes lab work, office consultation, testosterone injections, follow-up visits compared to $395 a month in Dallas or Austin, and you don't have to fight the traffic. Petty Clinic Low T is board-certified physician consultations, will provide the best form of brand strength testosterone available. Contact Petty Clinic Low T today. Just off Highway 84 and Old Hewitt Drive in Woodway, Petty Clinic Low T, helping men become the high-performance men they deserve to be. PettyClinicLowT.com or Google search Low T Waco. How did Edward Jones become one of the biggest financial service companies in the world? By not acting that way. Financial strategies, one-on-one advice, it's a big difference. And that's why Brad Wilson, your Edward Jones financial advisor, makes sense of investing. Experience the difference for yourself. Brad Wilson, 250 Sharon Drive in Woodway, 254-776-4337. Edward Jones, member SIPC. There are 26 letters in the alphabet, over 600,000 words in the dictionary, and just three of them said together can change everything. Let's order pizza. Those three words lead to dough made from scratch and three fresh signature cheeses that blanket golden crust in a heavenly melt on Marco's Pizza that'll blow your mind. So visit Marco's.com to order and stop by Marco's Pizza in Bellmead, China Spring, Woodway, and soon to open in Robinson. Marco's Pizza the lovers get it. Welcome back to Sikkim 365 Radio. It's time for our weekly segment with John McLean of the Houston Chronicle, brought to you by Pioneer Steel and Pipe, where customer service is their main focus and best in metal, steel, and pipe for large or small projects, with two locations in Waco and Bryan. Family owned and operated since 1943. What a great day to have Hall of Fame, NFL Hall of Fame and writer uh, John McClain on the show with all of what's been going on in a monstrous day in the NFL. Aaron Rodgers, the Packers, Seattle and Denver in the trade with Russell Wilson, uh, Deshaun Watson's maybe day in court coming up, and on top of that, the Cowboys restructure some contracts. What a day it's been, John. One of the I know it's the day that all these things have to be decided, but golly, your thoughts about how you've kept up with it. Well, it's been easy. Aaron Rodgers staying in Green Bay is certainly not a surprise. I've been saying that for two years. It's all about the money. It's all about the money. Russell Wilson, I bet, gets a big new contract extension from the Broncos. They need to win the Super Bowl now. That division is loaded with great quarterbacks. And then there's Derek Carr, who's a good quarterback. And I'm thinking that Seattle, with Pete Carroll at 70, is not going to be rebuilding with Drew Locke. I think they could take that package and get Sean Watson. Uh, he's got the grand jury is going to hear evidence on Friday, the day his deposition starts. They'll decide whether to file charges or not. And if they don't, then the legal stuff could be cleared cleared up, but you still have 22 civil suits accusing him of misconduct, sexual assault misconduct. So what he needs to do is what he should have done a long time ago. 
reach settlements with his accusers, and then he would be the most attractive quarterback on the market. There's a lot of teams that need quarterbacks. Denver was one of them. Carolina, Washington, Pittsburgh, New Orleans, Seattle. Uh, there's the Giants. They need. There's a lot of teams that need quarterbacks, and I guarantee you the Texans would have taken this package for Watson. They would have had Drew Locke as a backup. They would have had a defensive lineman to put into the rotation. Then they would have had a number one pick two years ago, tied in Noah Fant, who would give them a second uh, really good tight end. So maybe that's what the, the Seahawks have up their sleeve. And if they do get Watson, the, the NFC North will have a first-round pick on all four teams, including two, Arizona and the Rams, who have quarterbacks taken first overall. Any way you look at it, the AFC West and the NFC West, if the NFC West gets Watson, would have the best quarterbacks top to bottom. With Watson, uh, when the league, when the grand jury makes this decision, do you think that the the league would just assume he's going to settle these civil suits and then move on him then, or does he have to settle the civil suits too if he's exonerated by the grand jury, which at this point is a coin flip? And yes, and plus they can hear that make testimony on Friday, and they may not make a decision on Friday. A week, two weeks, you never know. The wheels of justice turn so slow. We found this out because this has been going on for a year. And uh, Watson, there's a feeling that if he had reached settlements, all the investigations would have gone away. But he didn't do it. Now the accusers know that his income has gone up from $10.54 million base salary last year, $35 million this year. So I'm guessing they'd say, hey, Wait a minute. Things have changed. We're not going to take what we were interested in taking last year. So uh, I do think it'll be traded. It's just a matter of when and to whom. John, uh, going back to Russell Wilson, I mean, how much of a, a missing piece is he for that franchise? When your quarterbacks are Teddy Bridgewater <laughs> and Drew Locke, he's a huge missing piece. Two Super Bowls, he's got to feel rejuvenated. Seahawks didn't make the playoffs for the first time, I think, since he's been there, and he'll be 34. But the way guys are playing today, 40, I mean, Aaron Rodgers will be 39 uh, this year, and they're giving him a four-year extension. So quarterbacks, if they want to play to 40, they can do it. Do it. Drew Brees played to 40. Ben Roethlisberger and Phillip Rivers got close. So they could think that they're going to have Russell Wilson another five years. And I think when the time comes, if they don't win a Super Bowl, the fans in media in Denver will be very understanding, as will the fans in media in Green Bay. You do things uh, to circumvent the salary cap that are legal to try to win now that can cause you serious problems down the road. And fans in those two cities are sophisticated enough to understand why they did it. Does this make the desperation price for Jimmy Garoppolo go up now that uh, you know, Russell Wilson has moved and Aaron Rodgers is staying put? Jimmy Garoppolo coming off major surgery to his throwing shoulder. I don't think so. I believe that any trade for Garoppolo is going to have to be a conditional pick. Say a team gives a four, and if you play 16 games, it would be a three uh, because you've got to worry about that. I mean, his throwing was suspect anyway, and now he's had major surgery. Maybe it'll help him throw better, but, you know, he's a – I would think at best he'd be a third-round pick no more. So, John, uh, you mentioned it a couple times there, and, and I know you didn't probably really have too many doubts about Aaron Rodgers staying in Green Bay. There's now been some some back and forth. He denied the, the numbers that were put out there uh, originally, although we haven't had any you know information on what the numbers exactly look like. But I'm going to assume no surprise on your part and just uh, your thoughts on the fact that maybe this uh, takes away some of the drama that's been lingering around Green Bay here recently. Well, I think all the Packer fans I know, and they're the best in the country, I'm really happy for them. I'm happy for all my friends in the media up there. They don't ever day <laughs> have to wonder what's going to happen. Now they can start complaining about why Aaron Rodgers has only been to one Super Bowl and can he go to a second one. So there's all kind of issues that they can breathe a, a collective 
sigh of relief. I don't know why, after Ian Rappaport broke that story, why uh, Rogers would feel the need to tweet that it wasn't true. Because we know it's going to happen. The deal wasn't signed, of course, but he's going to sign it. So uh, everything will be will be so peaceful in Backerland, at least till they get to next season. And I don't know what Aaron Rodgers is going to be able to do now to get his ego massaged. Because <laughs> he has a huge ego, and he likes to be at the center of attention. Maybe he's going to have to go get another celebrity girlfriend. <laughs> Yeah, he does seem to love drama or create it, and you wonder if even someone like that gets tired of it and needs a break from it. Well, if he wanted uh, to have a break from it, he certainly could. Last year, it was leaked to Adam Schefter; he wanted out, so that created all season a turmoil. After he didn't get the money he wanted, and in an ex- on an extension, so now you know he's created controversy all year. I think he's just a drama queen. John, would you go get one of those cleanses that he got? Uh, You know, if I (laughs) thought it would help me lose weight, yes, I would. (laughs) But if it didn't, if I didn't, uh, no, I'm not going to have forced vomiting, forced diarrhea, and blood (laughs) And I'm wondering, when you're giving blood, is it like leeches in the medieval period? Or do they actually do it the normal way? (laughs) Uh, John, there was about 10 teams out of the 32 that decided to use their franchise tags. Uh, I'm not going to run down the list, but you had guys like Orlando Brown and Cam Robinson and Devontae Adams, obviously. Was there anything that stuck out to you in regards to the franchise tag usage? Only that the Chargers signed Mike uh, Williams, Mm. their receiver, because they had the money to do it. So it was smart to do it. And teams will try to sign these guys to multi-year contracts that will lower those salary cap figures. John, what a weekend. Confetti everywhere in the Ferrell Center with both the men's and women's basketball teams as they head to Kansas City after winning the Big 12 title. Your thoughts about that as a Sikkim Hall of Fame leader of love? Well, it was it was certainly uh, outstanding for Baylor fans everywhere, and everybody takes so much pride in it. I'm, I'm really sorry that Scott Drew didn't get Big 12 coach of the year, but that's what happens when you get swept by Texas Tech. I think he's got a chance to be national coach of the year. If you look that he lost four starters and all the injuries he's had, I'm looking at next year's roster. And if uh, Samba comes back, Samba's been better since Samba Chachua went out. Somebody told Samba, do not put the ball on the floor. We used to, during games, my friends and I, we would text each other, don't put the ball on the floor. He stopped, and he's played better than any time in his career. And I hope he comes back next year. He might be uh, have a chance to play in the NBA. And I'm wondering, with Langston Moore back, all those guards, with uh, Keontae George coming in, how is Scott Drew going to have enough playing time for all those players? But it's a great, it's a great problem to have. And then down here at the uh, baseball classic mm-hmm. at Minute Maid Park, Baylor, Texas, Tennessee, and UCLA went two and one and Baylor was the only team to beat UCLA and UCLA was declared the champion because it beat the Longhorns and they had the biggest run differential. So it was a very productive baseball classic for the Bears as well. Just a great time all around to be a Baylor grad, unless you're trying to come to Waco and negotiate all the road work. I told a friend of mine, I'm not coming back for five more years. Well, it's not going to change. I mean, I it, feel we, bad for you guys. When I looked at that at that welcome center, I thought it was just going to be a little one story oh. building there. I didn't know what it was going to be, and maybe when the time they finally get the rose stick, then they're going to start the basketball arena. <laughs> I, I think I would stay on the other side of town. You have traffic in Houston. You can't say that about Waco. But see, Waco's in the escape. Like, you were supposed to come to Waco so you can get around without all this oh, nonsense. That's, yeah. yeah, it's like It would be like going to Hawaii and then there's no beach. I yeah, mean, that's, that's true. That's at the point. Baylor alumni dinner last week when I was there on Friday, I stayed at the Marriott Courtyard downtown, and it took me, it took me what would have taken five minutes to get to the parking lot at the stadium. 30 minutes yeah. to get there, and I went in a route. I thought, well, there's a Waco native. Nobody else will be doing what I'm doing. Hell, everybody else 
for doing what I was doing, but I made it on time, and it was a great event to see a lot of Baylor Lions Foundation uh, uh, honoring a lot of alums. And it is. I take so much pride every time I come home to Waco. I hang out with my family, and I can't wait to the next Baylor event. And I can't wait for the tournament, Big 12 and the NCAA. Thank you. got one? Yeah, John, uh, kind of a big combine for the Baylor players. I mean, you had Tyquan Thornton there. I know the combine's not the end-all, be-all. Uh, I, I realize that. But, I mean, in terms of free marketing for the football program and, and those guys getting some name recognition, Tyquan on Thursday night, then what Kalen Barnes ran on Sunday, JT Woods had uh, a nice workout as well. Um, again, not the most important thing, but just your thoughts on, on what you saw from the Baylor guys at the combine. JT Woods at safety ran a 4-3-6, and he's big. So only one school in the history of the combine has ever had two players crack a 4-3, and that would be those fighting Baylor Bears. It was a great time. They had, I think, seven players there. Galen Petrie didn't run the 40, but he worked out great. He's going in the second round. He'll be the highest, the highest drafted, I think, Bernard will go in the third round. And I'll tell you what. Those fast guys may, may not be first or second day picks, but they certainly made some money with their speed. Unfortunately, the fastest of the fast seldom pan out. Chris Johnson, the running back for the Titans, only one to one in the four twos, unless you take Deion Sanders, who claims he ran in the four ones, but nobody else saw it. Yeah, we've heard from Jalen Petrie, Tyquan Thornton, and Kalen Barnes since, uh, I guess, the last two days. They are just great. I bet they did amazing in the interviews as well because of the character it seems like they have. What a weekend. All the attention from Taekwon, then Kalen, JT, et cetera. And, John, thanks for your time. That's great for recruiting. And if I could talk to those guys, I'd say thank God. There you go, John McClain, Hall of Fame writer. Houston Chronicle, Waco native, went to Baylor, on with us. Incredible NFL writer and funny as hell when you watch him tweet sometimes as well. This is Sikkim 365 Radio. Paul Catalina's Top 5 is next. At Ideal MRI, we feel blessed to be a part of the Waco community. We're a small family business right here in Central Texas, and our goal is to bring down the cost of health care while maintaining high quality. At times like this, the cost of health care has never been more important, and unfortunately, significant illnesses and injuries still occur. That's why Ideal MRI is open and here to serve you through the difficult time. We offer premium MRIs just like a hospital with state-of-the-art technology and specialists, but you'll pay less. Sometimes thousands of dollars less, whether you're using insurance or not. At Ideal MRI, we accept most insurance and there are no hidden costs. Even offering financing if that's needed, everything included in the price, and you'll not get something as a surprise in the mail later on. If you need an MRI, ask your doctor about Ideal MRI. They'll know. You can schedule an appointment safely from home online in minutes at IdealMRI.com or give us a call, 833-IDEAL-MRI, Ideal MRI. MRI.com. Born in Waco, Brotherwell Brewing exists to serve the Central Texas community with locally crafted beer of the highest quality. They want to bring Central Texas closer to the brewing experience so everyone can enjoy well-made beer as much as they do. For two and a half years, they've been bringing high-quality beer to Central Texas at their location on Bridge Street in East Waco. Brotherwell Brewing believes in community and bringing people together to enjoy products made in their community. So for your game day, whether it's a tailgate or at home, stop by Brotherwell Brewing for high quality craft beer made right here in central texas 400 east bridge street and check them out online at brotherwell.com let camille johnson realtors guide you seamlessly through the process of buying your dream home or selling your current one commercial farm and ranch or residential camille johnson realtors can smoothly and successfully lead you through any transaction with a team of 28 experienced agents who are excited about serving you camille johnson realtors services the entire greater waco area if you're in the market to buy or sell contact camille johnson realtors 104 midway center in woodway or find them online at www.camillejohnson.com camille johnson realtors elegant charming warm welcome home 
Baylor Scott and White Southwest Sports Medicine and Orthopedics. The team physicians for Baylor Athletics diagnosing and treating all sports related injuries, including concussions. These specialists also provide orthopedic services for athletes and non athletes alike, whether it's knee or shoulder pain, hand or wrist injuries, orthopedic spine care, and even an arthritis and total joint clinic. Trust the doctors Baylor Athletics trust. Baylor Scott and White Southwest Sports Medicine and Orthopedics wants to get you back in the game. Automatic Chef Canteen is a full-service micro-market vending and office coffee provider with state-of-the-art vending equipment, a wide variety of products, and offering custom-fitted micro-market vending office coffee solutions for your employee break room. You want a full break room solution and a workplace oasis? Well, Automatic Chef Canteen, locally owned and operated for over 50 years in Central Texas, also includes in-house mechanics on call 24-7 for fast, reliable service and maintenance. Automatic Chef Canteen, 6900 Imperial Drive in Waco or online at automaticchefcanteen.com. From the first workout to the last practice, sports is an incredible and rewarding challenge. Hi, everyone. This is Dan Ingham with the First National Bank of Central Texas, and we're proud to support each athlete, every parent, and our educators. From families, small businesses, to the biggest industry, we're here to help. With remarkable products like mortgage lending, we've got banking ideas that fuel big dreams. The First National Bank of Central Texas, familiar faces making local decisions. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Welcome back to Sikkim 365 Radio. This is Paul Catalina's Top 5 at 555, presented by Champion Salon and Barber. To book your appointment, go to championsalonandbarber.com. The Top 5 effects of the Aaron Rodgers, con- I said contract, but apparently there's there's not one according to Aaron, but... Uh, Jack and I, uh, Jack did not want to change this thing another time. He was uh, he was frustrated when we had to change it because I had sent him a logo of quarterback needy teams and or a suggestion, and one of them made a trade. <laughs> what twenty minutes after I sent it to you, Jack? Yeah, about twenty minutes. So we had to change things up, and you know Jack's already mean enough to me, so I didn't need uh, I needed any worse today. But number five, ups the going rate for QBs once again, because once this contract, even though they said that four years, 200 million is not the number and he hasn't signed it. Eventually, like John McClain said, they're going to do something because that's what this is about. And they have to do something between him and Devonta Adams to make sure their salary cap is right. So eventually it will happen and save the money on the cap. So what is going to be the rate for quarterbacks? Yes, uh, Aaron Rodgers and Patrick Mahomes will set the market, but on the next tier down, what's the rate going to be between, you know, them and, and Dak and Josh Allen and all those guys, what's the new rate going to be? Russell Wilson's going to probably sign a new deal in Denver. What is that going to do? And this certainly will set that because, again, you know, unless you're Aaron Rodgers, you're not getting Aaron Rodgers' money, but the second tier is going to be interesting to see. Well, you know, it keeps going up every time. You, I mean, it used to be maybe the salary cap was $50 million a team. I don't, mm-hmm. know, what, you know, I don't know where it started, but it, it's, it's just what – you know, average guys in the NBA now are making eight to ten million dollars a year, and and I'm not against it. Hey, if you can get it, get it. That money easily. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just it's just that's part of the deal. Chump change yeah. almost. Like, uh, yeah. I mean, what's the what's the average? Is it fifty million per year? Is that he's going to make? That's what that's what the well, rumors I mean, based are. Based on the initial which, report, is it fifty yeah. million per year? Okay, yeah. fifty million per year. Then yeah, he's the highest paid quarterback by at least five million. Mahomes has got forty five annually. Josh Allen forty three. Dak, 40. Deshaun, well, not right now. Uh, Matt Ryan, 30. And Russell Wilson, 35. I mean, those are like the top five guys per mm-hmm. year. So, yeah, he's bumping it by at least $5 million. And I don't know whose contracts are coming up anytime soon that's going to be in the ballpark of, you know, Mahomes and all those guys, I guess. Like, Joe, like what does this mean for Joe Burrow in a year? Yeah, so, you like, know. yeah in like three or four years. Uh, what does that mean for those guys? But, but yeah, I mean, most of the quarterbacks now, even though we're starting to talk about these young guys, I mean, you start looking at it like Stafford and Garoppolo and Rodgers and Wilson and Ryan. Like, those are all older guys now that are all in amongst the top ten highest-paid quarterbacks. Uh, but you do have some young guys like like Allen and Mahomes and and Dak. So yeah, uh, just curious to see like how that that bumps it up five million per year if that contract becomes accurate. In Aikman's career, he renegotiated his deal. I think after they won their first Super Bowl, his salary was two point five million. He had a signing bonus of eighty two 
eight eight million two hundred and fifty thousand. And I remember it was like a hundred million. I don't even know if it was that. It probably was. It's like a five year fifty million dollar deal. And we gasp at that. Remember? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Gasp. Now you're like, oh, five year fifty mil bargain. Yeah. Yeah. Was well, he the backup? Uh no, but uh Number four, Deshaun Watson's market becomes slightly clearer now. This is still muddy waters until the legal situation is cleared up. But uh, now that you see what the going rate is for someone like Russell Wilson, what it was, you know, all, all this is that has happened in the day, you know what it's going to take to get Deshaun Watson if he is cleared. Uh, and you also know the teams that could be involved uh, in, in this deal, which I'll, I'll get to in, in a second. But it does somewhat clear a very murky situation with Deshaun Watson, which is all, is going to remain murky until the grand jury makes its decision. And they don't care. They don't, they're not going to, their lives aren't going to be changed whether Deshaun Watson plays on opening day or not. So, you know, th th it doesn't matter to them. Yeah, he's until that thing is cleared up. I mean, that's the then, thing. Until yeah. that gets cleared up, there ain't yeah. nothing clear right yeah. now. I mean, yeah. like um, you're right that it, it does if he's available make make it clear where he could go and what actually makes sense. Like obviously he's not going to Green Bay, he's not going to Denver, he's not you know, um, but where else he might go? Uh, let's get the the legal cases sorted yeah. out first. I mean, that's that's the thing. It's I would like, think it, it really clears up what the value is. Yeah, no, for like, sure. That's what it is. And so. even then, that's kind of a question mark, too, just because, like, yeah. he hasn't played in a while now at this point. I mean, by the time he suits up, if he suits up, he'll have been out of the league for nearly two years. Um, but, yeah, I mean, he's definitely still got value remaining. By the way, I just looked at, like, the upcoming free agents. It appears, if I, if I did this correctly, next year, the free agent quarterbacks, you'll have Jimmy G., you have Stafford, you have Derek Carr, Kirk Cousins, Baker Mayfield. So there, there will be a few of those guys. Did They're I, not going to get fifty million per year, though. That's no. for sure. Did I see where Baker Mayfield's having a statue built uh, in Oklahoma? Yeah, yeah. Did I, okay. Every right. Heisman winner gets a statue. They have okay. Heisman Park there, yeah. so there's already five or six statues uh, up there already. Yeah, they, they yeah. have a bunch. <laughs> it's going to be like Yankee Stadium in the Monuments. No, so. yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Number three, QB needy teams uh, move on to the next step. Uh, so if you are particularly, these two jump out at me, Carolina and Pittsburgh. If you are these two teams, what do you do? Yeah, I mean, I probably, you know, we kind of thrown Washington uh, in into this mix as well. Uh, New Orleans, maybe, but these two really jump out at me as what's the option? What are the options that they have? You know, what do you do if you're you're here? Do you get involved in Deshaun Watson if he comes up? Do you do, do, do you make the Jimmy G desperation trade? Do you, you know, where do you go? Do you, does one of you sign Mitch Trubisky? You know, which is a, a you know, Marcus Mariota is on the market. What what happens there? You know, where what's your you know, decision where you have to settle now that you know both Aaron Rodgers and Russell Wilson are not options for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean Matt Rule and Carolina, they desperately need a quarterback, and they've been linked with Deshaun Watson since the Deshaun Watson story happened, basically because they're in such need of a quarterback. So, wouldn't be surprised to see them strike. Like the only thing is, is you know, Rule's kind of in a prove it year, kind of kind of getting into prove it territory, and you know, do you want to? risk it you know your your prove it year on deshaun watson you know like that is he gonna can you rely on him and i don't mean like him getting in trouble again but like are we sure he can play can he play the full season there's not going to be any court thing that comes up or whatever but but yeah i mean he if he's available there's going to be some teams interested no matter what and, and i definitely would expect carolina at the very least to be one of those carolina washington a few others had to sit there and see that news with russell wilson and throw up all over themselves yeah, yeah. especially since washington yeah. was was enthusiastic to try to get Russell Wilson. Let's and go draft the next Dwayne Haskins. Again. Yep. All right, number two, Devonta Adams' deal is next, and you know he was obviously franchised today, and they're going to have to get that done. But uh, I, I, you know, as soon as you you hear this about Aaron Rodgers, you know, I do think that there was a chance that maybe the Packers, you know, could have franchised Devonta Adams and then tried to trade him if. Aaron Rodgers wasn't there because then you're kind of in a rebuild mode or, or things are changing and maybe try to get draft picks. But now, you know, uh, Rodgers and Adams will be will be together and uh, you don't franchise or not do a deal with Devontae Adams when you decide to bring Aaron Rodgers or Aaron Rodgers decides to come back. So uh, going to do everything they can to make him happy. I wonder what his overall number is going to be because I would say that of course, over the last five years, I don't know if there's been anybody as consistently good as he has outside of DeAndre Hopkins, who this last year got hurt. And then Debo Samuel's kind of on the scene now, but that's his first really good year. How much is Amari Cooper? $20 million? Yeah. 
then Devontae Adams is more than that. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, he's not the highest number, though. No, Julio, I know. But Julio I, Jones is yeah. making 22, which is yeah. a freaking crime. And then DeAndre Hopkins is making, like, nearly $28 million per year. God, yeah. So, but Devontae Adams has been, I mean. He as, is. He'll push 30 per year, probably. He yeah. is, I mean, he'll push $30 million per year, probably. So, they're going to give him this, the, the franchise, top five of the, the, the what position, right? Yeah. They will sign him then, most likely, though, to a contract to help – Alleviate it? Can yeah. they, do you have a, well, they, a timeline here or not? Yeah, they're until July 15th. Okay. Right. So they have till July right. 15th to do okay. that. But all right. all right, number one, what happens to your first round draft pick of a couple years ago, Jordan Love? And now you're gonna have quarterback needy teams out there. Who who was the who was the team that liked Jordan Love the second most? Coming out of college. Coming out of college. Do you find out who that is and go, here you go, or do you keep yeah. Jordan Love? And see how the roller coaster it, rides with with Aaron Rodgers. But this is a guy who's a first round draft pick two years ago that now, at least for the foreseeable future, is not going to start for Green Bay. It was uh, an odd pick at the time. Yeah. Like it didn't make a whole lot of sense at the time when they drafted him. All it did was bring more drama to what was already. Drama. Yeah, that's all yeah. it did. All it did was just piss Aaron Rodgers off even further, which is apparently not that hard to do. But uh, yeah, I I mean, he, there's got to be room somewhere for him. But it's it's not in Green Bay for much longer. You're right about that. I mean, unless he's just really cozy being the backup to Aaron Rodgers, and they're really cozy having him as the backup to Aaron Rodgers. But besides that, yeah, I would think they're going to go and try and maximize any value they can get. I mean, he seems like enough of an unpolished thing that, you know, you don't feel like you're like everybody knows in and out, like what they're getting. So maybe there is a team that's like, Hey, this Jordan love kid, there's a little something there. Let's, let's try him out. But yeah, I mean, he's, he's definitely got to be on the move unless he's just relegated to, to pure backup duty for the rest of his career. I yeah. think so a lot of interesting things that, that happen, and, and you know, this is not even getting into, I'm glad it's over though. Oh, yeah. Now let's get through the Deshaun Watson thing Friday or whenever that is. And we can I really do want that, that to yeah. get wrapped up like in, in, in some finality, think, I'm but sure I mean, look, I'm just some average Joe uh, talking about it. Like I know there's victims involved and things like that. That. I'm not trying to be insensitive, but like, yeah, the the whole legal thing, I, that that gets very tiresome after a while. Uh, so, yeah, we'll see what happens. Speaking there. of quarterbacks and money, Troy Aikman's deal that's going to move him to Monday Night Football, according to Richie Whip, Rit, Whip, maybe others have reported this. Five years, ninety million, eighteen million a year. That's more than he ever made in a season, except like his next to the last year when they had to give him a clump of thirteen million as a bonus. Romo, 10 years, 180. They both make $18 million a year in broadcasting. That's Good for crazy. both of them. Good for each one of them. All right. Thanks to Emery Winter and his fan club on the chat room. Jack McKenzie, happiest as he could be with Devontae Adams and Rogers tied up and Armstrong. Well, just because he's here. Thank him as well. And Paul Catalina, Craig Smoke, I'm David Smoke. Thank you on the chat room. Thank you as well on the text line. Thanks to our incredible sponsors. Tomorrow, we're going to start a little series of looking back on the hiring of Mac Rhodes as the AD at Baylor in 2016. This is Sikkim 365 Radio, 365 Sports, and good night. MRI is a small family business right here in Central Texas. We're open to support you while lowering the cost of health care bills. When you need an MRI, ask your doctor for an Ideal MRI. Visit us at IdealMRI.com or call us at 833-IDEAL-MRI. Stepping into the boots of a U.S. Army officer can add confidence and leadership skills to your son or daughter's career path. See all the things they can achieve in our boots at GoArmy.com. U.S. Army Waco Recruiting Company, 254-598-8131 or 254-776-1543. After my first car accident, I feared the biggest damage would be to my wallet. I expected a mountain of bills and a long, drawn-out process. But my Texas Farm Bureau insurance agent was there when I needed her and helped me get back on my feet and in my car in no time. Instead of a hassle, I got reassurance and a quick recovery. Stop by and see our agents at one of our three McLennan County locations. Coverage and discounts are subject to qualifications and policy terms and may vary by situation.